Hey there, Matt here from Food Trailer King, and um, thank you for taking the time to um, look into this training that I've put together about how to make money with your food trailer, even a new food trailer during uh, COV-19. Um, this training, I'm gonna take you through essentially five steps, right? But before I get into those steps and so on and so forth, this is a very, very quick introduction. Um, we've been manufacturing food trailers for quite a few years here now. We've helped hundreds of people um, get into uh, food trailers and, and food trucks and get going and, come, and so on and so forth. Behind us is my actual um, factory. We've got a whole heap of stuff on display and so on and so forth. Um, we do all manufacturing up there and it is open to the general public. Now, um, this is not about the factory. This is not about selling food trailers. This is about giving you the ability to have the five steps to understand exactly how you can make money even with things shut down. And when you can make money with things shut down, you can make a lot more um, going forward, okay? So this is a really quick, brief introduction and um, to sort of give you the big picture overview and um, understand once we go in, I'm gonna sort of duck over and literally be on a computer screen in a minute, okay? Um, I'm gonna take you through the, the five steps in detail. Vital that you watch from start to finish. Go through each step in full, each step in full. At the end of each part, I'll give you actual action steps, right? I'm seeing a lot of current clients smashing out of the ballpark at the moment. And I'm seeing other people sit on the hands going, oh, it's all too hard and so on and so forth. Literally, I'll give a whole heap of examples as we go through. Anyway, watch that. At the very end, I'll take you through a tour of this actual um, complex here so you can sort of understand. On the way through, I'll talk about different food trailers, different things about compliance, a whole heap of stuff. So we'll get into the training now. Okay, so I thought that little short introduction was a good way of doing it, um, coming directly from our factory and so on and so forth. So um, I want to get in and basically get going straight away. So the food trailer profits during COV-19 and beyond, replacing your income or replace your income quickly. So it doesn't really matter what type of um, um, lifestyle, whether you're in the food business or wherever you came from, this training will be very, very useful for you. Plus, over and above that as well, in the future, okay, once you build the foundation, especially when you do it in tougher times, you will thrive and literally smash it out of the ballpark. We have a lot of clients at the moment um, that are literally going into delivery takeaway options and really, really smash it out of the ballpark. And you've been sitting on the sidelines or maybe you've lost your job, but you've got some money behind you and don't know what to do. Um, this could be a very, very good opportunity for you. Or if you've been sitting on your hands and now you know, you've been stood down or something like that, and um, you go, okay, cool, I've got time to do something, but you're just not sure which way to turn. Basically, this training is a step-by-step -step guide to get you going. I'll go through the steps in a minute, okay? So first, what's the goal, okay? So you have a clear, ready-to-go action plan to launch a new food business, no matter if you're new to your own business, a seasoned hospitality business owner, chef, or even an existing operator, okay? It doesn't matter who you are, um, I can definitely help you as part of this training as we go through, okay? So what we're gonna cover, okay? So basically we're gonna go through a five-step action plan and um, at the end of each step, there is literal action steps so you know exactly what to do next to sort of get going, okay? Um, first, we're gonna talk about different ways to choose a profitable location, okay? Second, we're gonna talk about creating a profitable menu, okay? So um, the years of experience, remember, um, I've been manufacturing um, food trailers and help a lot of people get in their food trailer business. You see all different people from all different walks of life, okay? Um, I've seen people come in, literally had almost no money, okay? Had to scrape and scratch um, to get everything together, but they had the passion and drive to do it. We helped them out, we helped them get going, and they've got it up and get going, they come back and buy multiple food trucks, okay? Um, and I've seen other people that just want to make a side income, get up and get going. It's all up to you what you want to do, and I know the tricks in regards to what makes someone successful, or unsuccessful um, in the food trailer business. Okay, step three, securing cash flow, producing delivery and takeaway options. Gonna run through a whole heap of those, right? Step four, um, I'm gonna go through and literally break down in dollars um, how many customers you need per hour, your average charge per head, all that sort of stuff, right? Your cost of goods, your other costs and stuff that uh, will cost of goods or cost of foods. I'm gonna break all that down so you can see exactly how much money you can make, okay? And then step five, I'm gonna uh, go through choosing and funding the right food trailer for you and all compliance things that you have to watch out for because a lot of people aren't aware. Like at Food Trailer King, we guarantee compliance, okay? So there's no issues in regards to um, compliance, but I wanna show you the things that you need to look out for. So you need to understand because a lot of things are hidden. I can't see it. So you need to understand what they are. So really, you're probably thinking to yourself, 
why a food trailer now, okay? Um, there's nothing truer than this, okay? In adversity, which is essentially uh, where we're at the moment, there's always opportunity, okay? As I walk around, um, just in, in my local area and look around and see things that are happening, I actually see people that um, uh, shut their business and walked away when they had every option to do takeaway and so on and so forth, right? Then I see other people out there doing whatever they can to survive, okay? So I'll give you an example. Um, locally, there's a Starbucks, okay? And Starbucks has literally shut their doors, right? They're still paying rent and so on and so forth. They did have people coming in and making money, okay? Where I saw a guy um, that has a Boost Juice, he's out there trying to rattle the people in from the mall and so on and so forth. So now, what's happening with the Boost Juice, more and more people are coming in. So he's starting to build his sales back to his baseline, where he starts to shut the door and have a zero opportunity, which is crazy, right? So the person taking the opportunity right now, which could be you with a food trailer, um, you build a baseline, okay? and you can do quite well, then you will literally smash it out of the ballpark because the other people sitting out there on their hands doing nothing, okay? Basically what will happen is when the time comes to get up and get going, they've got so used to doing nothing, they'll just literally um, not worry about doing much more and you'll already have such a foundation and so on and so forth. So you wanna be the person doing something rather than thinking of how bad it is. You wanna be using everything to your advantage so you can actually get somewhere and do something, okay? Um, the second real big reason, right, um, food. There's, if you look at shutdowns and so on and so forth, right? And in Australia, at least at that point in time while recording this, I believe we've been lucky because we haven't been completely and totally locked down with no other choice but to stay there and not move, right? But there's one thing um, that will never ever get shut down, that's food. People have to eat, okay? That's why the supermarkets are there. People can go into supermarkets and so on and so forth and they're allowing takeaway because they know people have to eat, okay? Um, food in any recession is the number one recession-proof business. If anything, in a lot of cases, people eat more, okay, because they're feeling down and so on and so forth, so they'll actually eat more food, okay? In saying that as well, you've got to understand this as well. The fact that a food trailer is mobile and if you don't like where you are, you can go elsewhere, nothing could be better. That is brilliant, okay? Instead of having to pay thousands of dollars per week in rent, I saw to a guy uh, just recently the other day he owned a takeaway shop and he was paying $5,000 a week in rent. I repeat that, $5,000 a week in rent, okay? And he couldn't afford it, okay? And he can't afford it. And so he's come to me, he's got, he's already worked out his numbers and he knows he will smash it out of the ballpark literally by having a, a food trailer nearby and having a much smaller operation because he doesn't have to sell so many things just to pay his rent, okay? So it's the number one recession-proof business. That's why you wanna be part of it. Doesn't matter if the economy's thriving, if the economy's diving, doesn't matter. Food trailers are the number one business. And as I said just before, people have to eat. That's the bottom line. People have to eat. And once you understand that concept and people are gonna eat no matter what, then you actually get to where you wanna be and you go, okay, cool. Now, how can I turn this into my own opportunity? Which is essentially, I'm gonna lay out the five step process right here during this training. Okay, so a um, little bit of warning. Watch this video in full from start to finish, okay? Go through each single step. It's very, very important, okay? If you skip steps, Okay, then what's gonna happen is you're gonna miss vital information. When you miss vital information, then you won't join all the dots. I've taken a lot of time, energy, effort to compile all this information for you so you can, you're very clear and you have a, literally a step-by-step -step plan to um, get your food trailer up and going and so on and so forth. And believe me, this is not about selling food trailers. This is about giving you a plan so you can be successful. Because I know once I give you a plan and you can be successful, well, you're obviously gonna come back to us and buy a food trailer. That's, it's not about selling, it's giving you proper, solid um, information. Anyway, um, the five step action plan. And if you're interested and people ever ask, if you want to know what that trailer is, that's a large 2.0 trailer, okay? We'll talk about that later, okay? So um, step one, choosing a profitable location. It always starts with the market first, okay? So the market really is the location where you're going to be. So basically, you've got two options, okay? You've got a fixed location, um, so you're in one spot and people are coming to you, or you've got a mobile location. I'm going to go through different examples in a minute, so you're moving from place to place. Pretty straightforward, right? And remember... Um, what I'm about to show you, it expands massively once you get into um, and be part of the and be and be part of like normal society when things return to more normal. Okay, 
um, but at the moment uh, is a little bit different, right? So option one, fixed location, okay? So first, you can operate on private land. If you're thinking, oh my God, council stuff and so on. So if I'm going to cover that off. I think it's in step four in regards to different council compliance, okay? Um, but the general rule of thumb if the land is owned by someone else, it could be you, it could, could be someone else that you um, have gone and organized with, it could be someone you know, it could be um, um, you know, a vacant commercial property that you parked out the front of and you've done them a deal, then really the council does nothing, okay? Because it's not under their um, jurisdiction. A lot of people get confused about that, right? Um, service stations, for example, is, is, a, is a good example, okay? Because you can pay a small amount of rent, Generally, if a service station is just like a convenience store, if you're not competing directly with them, they're getting money and they're getting people coming in and buying other stuff from them as well, right? Um, yeah, um, vacant land. Um, you can look around and, and get the updated details to contact the actual owner of the vacant land, okay? Um, a vacant commercial property for lease. If there's vacant commercial property, you can park at the front. Literally this morning, and I'm thinking I probably should have taken a photo, um, there is a coffee trailer it wasn't one of ours, but it was a, a, a coffee food trailer that was sitting out the front of a unit block, okay? And they had a couple of signs there, literally saying coffee, and people were wandering over and getting coffee from them, okay? Nothing could be better, okay? Um, council land as well. You can obviously work on council land. Now, there's a sort of... Um, the easiest way to explain dealing with the councils, okay, is this, okay? Um, think about it if it's your car, okay? Let, let's say... Forget it's a food trailer, think about it as a car for a minute. If you go and park somewhere, okay, and it's legally parked, and you can be there for a few hours, maybe a day, if you're lucky, right? Um, however, if you go there and set up camp and essentially stay there all the time, then the council will obviously get upset with you and, and ask you to move on, right? Um, the same really applies to food trailers. If you're going from place to place to place, and you stop somewhere for a few hours and go somewhere else for a few hours, generally, you'll never come on the council radar. Now, if you go and ring the council and ask them, because they're bureaucrats and um, uh, they, they're, they're, they're set to a certain thing, they'll probably say to you, oh, you have to apply with the council. We're not sure that uh, you can do that or no, you can't do that. But in reality, from what I know from actual food truck and food trailer operators, okay, they can go from place, well, sorry, let me rephrase it. They do go from place to place, set up a few hours and move on, set up a few hours and move on. Think about a smoko van. A smoko van pulls up in the streets. It doesn't get a permit every time it pulls up in the street, okay? It doesn't need one, so on and so forth. However, if you wanted to go permanently in a council location, that's all doable, but that becomes a conversation with the council. Sometimes it'll just be a permit. Sometimes I want actual money. It just depends on the, on the, on the situation. So that's your fixed locations, okay? Um, you can also have um, an add-on to existing premises, okay? So say, for example, that uh, you own a hotel, and this has happened multiple times, um, you own a pub, okay? And uh, let's say your pub inside the restaurant's getting too busy, you can add another cooking area out the back, okay? And um, um, the cooking area now becomes a, um, and obviously this, relates a little bit more to normal times, okay? Um, but the cooking area essentially becomes a um, an extra profit center, okay? Now, we've had plenty of people that come along and they've run small cafes and they got to the point where they just couldn't keep up, but they had extra space outside. So they've literally got a food trailer um, to offer a different part of the menu. I was talking to another person um, the other day and they actually owned a takeaway shop, right? And um, basically their takeaway shop and anyone in the food industry will understand what I'm talking about. They were selling fish and chips, burgers, all the standard stuff, right? But he wanted to sell kebabs, but he knew that if he had the kebabs in the same shop, okay, it just gets really difficult. Um, otherwise you just have to keep adding more and more staff. So what he's actually done is um, taken one of our King Kong food trailers and he's put that outside in the car park right next to his shop so he can monitor it and he has other staff in there and it looks like a completely different business. So if someone wants burger and fish and chips, they'll come to his shop and next door they want kebab, they'll just go there. Hopefully that makes sense, right? So it becomes an add-on to existing premises 
um, um, and still really on private land, okay? So here's an example, a service station, okay? Literally set it up in front of the service station or around the side and so on and so forth. And you put a little bit of signage, which we'll talk about signage later, um, then it will attract people because it's the new exciting thing, right? Um, council area, that's a picture of a boat ramp, okay? Um, now, once again, you can pull up there for a short period of time and um, seek forgiveness rather than permission. And that's what a lot of people would actually do. But if you wanted to set up there permanently, that'd be a conversation with the council and they'd ask you to do certain things and so on and so forth, right? Um, vacant land. Look at that big block of vacant land. It's even got a little bit of a um, um, sort of semi car park sort of entry area um, that's there already. Obviously, there's an old building that someone knocked down and so on and so forth. You'll see up near the Coles Express. So that that land is sitting there empty, okay? And they might take 12 months before they develop it. So you can easily find the contact details of the actual owner. There's a service called RP Data or there'll generally be a real estate agent's details on there and the real estate agent can help you secure that location because the way they say it, they're getting a tiny bit of money for their rent for the land. I want something, okay? And that's now a prime location because you compare, you'll pay next to nothing for um, to give them some money, whereas next door, for example, at the Coles, that'd be a huge amount of money. And now you've already got people coming to the Coles Express here and you're set up just here, for example, right? You're technically on these guys' land. There's nothing these people can do about it. They come there by something. They see your food trailer and buy something. You've got traffic passing by. These opportunities are everywhere. Sometimes it's a matter of just getting in your car and going looking for them, okay? Um, an add-on. So this is like literally a setup add-on. Obviously, you can't have tables and chairs and so on and so forth at the moment, but it's just a bolt-on to an existing business. So it generally would be either an expansion, so if you couldn't keep up with the coffee, you put someone that could do more coffee, or you go the other way, and for example, if you had a certain type of menu items, you could then change those menu items to um, um, something else, as in have something, a sort of different niche. So hopefully that makes sense, right? So option two, mobile locations, okay? So first, you've got industrial areas, okay? Even during these, um, these current times, in the actual industrial areas, the factories are all working away. People are there. One of the smartest things that I've seen people do over time in industrial areas is not be in the same place every day. Now, this depends on your menu, which we're going to talk about menus a little bit later, okay? But what they've actually done is gone and go, okay, cool. I'm not going to be in the same place every single day. Um, I'm going to only come to this area um, between these times every week. And literally, they'll go there, set up, literally for lunch and there'll be hundreds of workers around and they build up a database, which I'll talk about how to do that later. And they literally SMS the workers and say, on Wednesday, we'll be in this area. We've got this on and here's our menu, blah, 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 right? And then the people know that they're coming, they get a reminder text and so on and so forth. And then they go there and they literally got a queue and they just can't keep up. But they're going from place to place, um, different day, different area, but rotate it, if that makes sense, okay? Um, you can do a set, route private property um one of our clients recently um he posted on facebook someone thought uh, someone put a message in there that said you should um turn your food trailer and deliver milk and bread for people okay and interestingly enough mcdonald's is doing that at this point in time you go through drive through at mcdonald's and also um i've had a few clients that are actually doing that one guy in particular posted in facebook that that's exactly what he is doing he's literally going around delivering milk and bread and building up his clientele and delivering um, prepackaged meals, essentially taking his food trailer. Remember, once your food trailer is complied, you can cook directly in there. Some people aren't clear on that. You can do whatever you want in there. Okay, once it goes through and, and with compliance, we'll talk about that later, okay? Um, there's markets that are exempt from rules, okay? Some people aren't completely familiar with it, okay? If you look around, you see, we'll see that markets are exempt from rules. Sometimes it's just the farmer's market, okay, uh, where they're selling fresh fruit, but the food trailers can still be there. Um, other times it's a full-blown market, but some of the markets don't understand. Um, it's because they're food. Some of the market owners aren't clear on the rules, so they're sitting on their hands because they go, well, I'm not sure I can't do anything. So um, if you have a current food trailer or looking to get one and you know market operators, point out to them that, um, with the legislation, the markets are actually exempt from rules, okay? Um, short stopovers, okay? So um, certain areas in, in uh, the highway is a good example. There's 
areas where people pull over, right? Now, at this point in time, they're asking people not to move around much and so on and so forth, but people are still definitely moving around and they still need to eat. So you've got the pullover areas, but once again, you can't be in one of those spots for a long time. You have to move from place to place or you have to get permission. Just be clear on that. So industrial areas, okay? And if you think about this, all industrial areas look essentially the same, right? Properly, if you look at this area here, this building here, and then you look at these ones here, you'll notice how there's a road that looks like links between there. So you have to think about it strategically how you're going to do it. Because if you're parked roughly about here or here, okay, then most of these people in this area could actually come and actually collect food from you, okay? Then you can do the same thing over here and so on and so forth. And it's just a matter of um, being able to do it. You can actually geo-target people in that area if you understand what you're doing on Facebook. Literally drop a pin and say, we're going to be here for lunch on Wednesday and they can all know that you're there and so on and so forth, right? Uh, set route. Think of Mr. Whippy, okay? Mr. Whippy um, or the ice cream van, whatever you want to call it, they drive along the streets. They drive up and down the streets. You hear them coming. Sometimes you go, damn, it's in the street behind and missed it. Or sometimes your kids, if you've got um, younger kids, they might hear them coming um, before you do. They've got supersonic hearing because hearing, I can hear the ice cream van coming, right? But think that. You could run around essentially doing the same thing. And there's really no reason why you couldn't actually get a... And if you go to Google and Google Mr. Whippy um, um, song or Mr. Wh Whippy um, uh, recorded song, there's really no reason why, even with your food trailer, that's a familiar song that you couldn't just run that familiar song now. Sometimes people will sit there and go, oh, no, I wouldn't do that. They don't think it's Mr. Whippy. All these things that you think about in your mind that's pulling you backwards, okay? This all can be done. I have clients that are doing it right now, okay? The priority people are getting out there. They're not sitting on their hands going broke, okay? They're making money and they're making more money than they used to, wholly and solely because their competition is sitting on their hands, okay? You don't want to do that. Get into your food trailer, do something about it, okay? Farmers markets, like I said before, farmers markets still open, okay? Um, once again, the ones that aren't, maybe they're not, they're not clear on the, on, on the laws and so on and so forth, right? So action steps. So this is sort of the end of step one, okay? So choose one option. Choose somewhere or a, a, a methodology. So if it's if it's going from factory areas, that's fine, okay? Uh, if it's going to the farm market, that's fine, okay? Once we get through and talk about how much money you can make, you'll see the sort of um, uh, difference and so on and so forth, okay? Start searching online for different areas and different places and so on and so forth. Pick up the phone, talk to people, okay? Sometimes it's a matter of just getting a car. You're allowed to drive around as long as it's work-related and as long as you're not going on interstate trips and so on and so forth, right? To a certain extent. So pick up your phone, okay? Scout locations by driving around. Make a short list of potentially where you can go. By picking up the phone, you talk to people that say, hey, I want to put a food truck here. Once you start asking, you get a lot of no's, but you get a lot of yeses as well. You've just got to be persistent, Okay. Do a deal, get it finalized and get it started. You don't have to lock yourself into anything. Let's say you've got a physical location that you want to do, right? And the person goes, well, we want a 12 months lease from you and we want X amount. So look, no, it's a food trailer, it's mobile. I'm going to come here, I'm going to try it for three months and we're going to have a discussion out of this. I'm willing to pay this at the start, okay? They'll generally go through and do that because they're getting um, um, nothing anyway, right? Um Anyway, so hopefully all that makes sense. So I'm just going to run through here a quickly um, a walkthrough of the large 2.0 um, um, food trailer. This is a, a video recorded a little while back. Um, and essentially, if you wanted to look at our full range of food trailers, you can go to foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. Okay. However, um, do that after you absorb this video. If you've already watched the step three video, that's great. Otherwise, I'm just going to run through this quickly. Okay, so I've covered off on the large 2.0. Now, that video I filmed a little while ago while we actually created the large 2.0, um, it's become like super, super popular. One of the things you really, really have to watch when you're investing in an actual trailer, there's a lot of things that you may not realize until it's too late. For example, cupboard doors, you'll see trailers out there um, that have, they don't have covered doors. So essentially what happens is when you start driving, all your stuff just shoots out on the ground and you can't solve that problem. It's one of the reasons why I created a large 2.0 and it'll co cost you a small fortune to fix that. So this is still the large 2.0, okay? There's a couple of upgrades that we've done, okay, to make it a better trailer. 
Um, there's all the little things that you don't even know, okay? The price is still the same, but there's better things, okay? First, this actual particular range hood here is actually designed so um, nothing drops onto your actual food, okay? And you might go, well, why is the range hood like that? Um, basically, we had a couple of councils say, hey, you can't have this over the top range hood. So if we upgraded that, that's an extra cost to us, but no extra cost to you, okay? We've also upgraded the tires. They're just a more heavy due to wider track tire, makes the trailer actually ride a lot more stable. Now, more importantly, okay, I'll show you a couple other things because some people do ask from time to time, okay? I'll show you in here, and you'll notice that there's no, um, that you'll notice that the, the actual support jacks aren't down. You'll notice in here a couple of things, right? While I'm talking about it. First, our system here, which I've explained in other videos, our hot water system is like basically premium. That's pressurized, okay? Um, so hot and cold, hot and cold. Now this is your hand washing sink. The most important thing you must remember, okay? If you're in New South Wales, and sometimes people in Queensland like it anyway, we can happily give you one of these splash guards, okay? To make everything comply to the laws, you have to have a splash guard like this. It can be removable, so it's easier to clean. This is to stop when you're washing your actual hands, um, knocking things, knocking um, things over, and plus it's on the inside. One of the little things we do for you as well, we give you some um, some oils, a specialised oil to um, make your benches nice and clean. It's all part. This is pretty much ready to go for a customer. Now, um, you'll see everything's all tested and tagged. The electrical automatically you'll get banned from places if you don't have the right electrical, don't have the right points and so on and so forth. Now, really, really important, the reason I came in here, what we've done, this is still the large 2.0. So everything you watched in the last video still applies. However, right, the fridge that was previously here, okay, what we found is people would come and go, okay, I wanna cook here, but then the fridge was in the way. So we've got a better fridge, okay? The capacity is about 20 liters less. We've got a better fridge. Now this will go down, it will freeze and it'll also turn into a fridge so you can use it as either or. And now we put this fridge here. So you can just picture yourself serving. You're serving away, you wanna grab something out of the fridge, drink, no problems. You got someone else working there, no problems. Grab something, pass it to them, they're, they're sweet. They can sort of have themselves set up on this corner. You obviously still got the fold out table as well, okay? and we're re really, really good to go. Once again, I'll point out to you, these actual sliding doors, okay? These are like gold. If you have a trailer that's just a bench and underneath it, there's nothing, basically you're gonna have stuff absolutely flying absolutely everywhere. Now, I'll show you something else that we've done as an innovation, okay? We're always ahead of the game here, okay? Um, these are set up, you'll see a lot of stickers on the trailers these days. These are set up so your staff, anyone working for you, there's always a sign say, hey, open the windows, everything should be kept um, clean and hygienic. We do this as sort of an extra thing for you, just to help you out. Now, um, I'll go under here and show you a couple other things that we've done. First, a lot of councils are going this way and it's an optional upgrade. So what I'm about to show you is not a standard part of the large 2.0, but all our trailers now have it available as an upgrade. The XL, the Maxi, and the other trailers, they, um, some of them have it standing, I'll mention that in the video, but this in particular, under here is a fresh water tank, and at the front of the trailer is a gray water tank. Now, as an extra 800 bucks plus GST for stainless steel tanks, but here's what happens, right? A lot of the councils have been going, hey, we don't want you having grey water and we don't want you having fresh water inside the actual trailers. Not all councils are doing it yet, but they're doing it. So first, it frees up area under there where the hot water systems is, so you don't have to lug um, um, bottles back and forth, right? Then, under here, you'll see grey water, fresh water, okay? So for your fresh water, you just simply plug a hose in there. So much more easier to use, okay? Then, under here, you've actually got your um, grey water, so you can just literally open that up. We've got to be careful, because we actually test all the tanks to make sure they don't leak before they actually go. So, there's a whole bucket load of stuff that um, happens over time that we've just been innovating, making better and ma making better. So, the large 2.0 is the same price as I showed you in the previous video, but to be crystal clear, I've done extra upgrades at no extra charge for you. Now, first, the actual range hood is upgraded to that type of range hood. Second, the fridge is moved from there to there, which allows us to put two little freezers in there or two other little bar fridges if you want to, or you can just use it for storage. It makes much, much better use of the actual um, um, trailer. 
You've got the splash guard, doesn't matter if you're Queensland, New South Wales, you've got the splash guard, we're happy to include that, just ask. You've got hot and cold water premium system to run with there, right? We don't have any problems with these. Basically, we, the trailer is just getting better and better and the price is remaining the same, so it's really, really cool. Um, now, one last thing that I should tell you, the last probably innovation that we're doing on all our trailers now is essentially, you'll see here, that's a 15 amp circuit. So this particular customer, this is about to go to a customer, this is not standard, we just add this in for a few hundred dollars extra. Basically what happens is with this 15 amp circuit, you've got your own individual uh, circuit. So people having generators on the drawbar, what we're finding, and I'm sort of gonna contradict myself in some of the other videos, right? Um, but what I was finding is people getting to site and even the quietest of the quietest generators were actually too loud, okay? They're making too much noise. Then we also found that um, people were having trouble moving the trailers because it put too much weight on the front of the trailer, okay? And also uh, the, the other issue that, that came is the actual legal towing weight. There's too much weight on the tow ball, so the car was driving like this because our goal is to make everything as good as possible. So you come here, we give you the trailer, you're happy with everything. Then afterwards, if you have any problems, we fix it straight away. And then when you're out there in your food truck in the morning talk to other food truck people and they're going to go, where'd you get your food trailer from? You're going to say food trailer king and other people come back. And that seems to work and get a lot of people referring us now. Now, um, that is the innovation. So that, and then also here, we set the trailer up on a couple of different circuits, okay? So essentially they're 15 amp circuits. So because they're 15 amp circuits, basically what happens is you can have either a 15 amp generator, like a 3.5 kVA generator. They're only 750 bucks. They work just as good as a much, much more expensive one, right? And after two years, they all die. You just go get yourself another one. It's just a part of running a business. They, they will last past that as well, right? Um, so you can just plug one here, one here, one here. And, and essentially what happens is when you actually go to site, you can run two leads, three leads, whatever, and then the generator can be off into the distance, okay? So there's no noise, so everything's nice and silent around you. You can go chain it to your car, chain it to a tree, put it somewhere um, where some other people might be running their generators and everything's sitting. Once it's 10, 15 meters away, it's much quieter and you just run your lead. So anyway, that's all the innovation. So to recap, the large 2.0, still $19,900 plus GST, right? You've got the option for 800 bucks plus GST to put the two under trailer tanks, okay? You've got all your doors on your cupboard. We've upgraded the fridge, no extra cost to you. We've upgraded the actual um, range hood, upgraded the tires so they're stronger. One of the things you gotta look is the load capacity of the tires because you get knocked back and spend another 500 bucks um, on tires. The amount of stories and the amount of people that we have come to us to either buy cheap and nasty from some backyarder or alternatively, even worse, they buy second hand. Funnily enough, this is essentially people come to us, ask for prices to fix their secondhand things, okay? Or something they've tried to bring in from overseas or something themselves because it's just a wreck. We give them the price, be as low as we can. They figure out that it's gonna to be too expensive. Then essentially what happens is we see it back on Gumtree. They sell it to some other, other person, okay? And then that person, that same person comes back, buys a new one and the person that originally um, had the, uh, sold the, 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 second, the, the second hand trailer or the trailer that was faulty to start with, right? Then a new person comes in and asks for the same quote. Anyway, don't get caught in that trap. So to recap, we've got range hood, we've got the upgraded tires, upgraded fridge freezer, and now pretty much all of our trailers are doing this. So hopefully that hasn't confused you. It hopefully educated you more and helped you understand things better. Um, um, we'll leave it there. It's 19,990. 19, um, um, uh, dollars plus GST for the large 2.0 with all these upgrades now, okay? So this is pretty much standard. All right, all right. So hopefully you enjoyed um, the walkthrough of the large 2.0. So this is the end of step one. You know what you gotta do. You've got your action steps and so on and so forth. Get in there, do it, okay? And then uh, we're gonna come back and go through step two. Okay, step two, creating a profitable menu. It's probably the thing that everyone wants to know, okay? How do I create a profitable menu? How do I keep, um, make things profitable? Once again, over the years, I've helped hundreds of people get up and get going in their food business. Some knew exactly what they're doing, some were lost, okay? Just didn't have a clue. Um, but 
I've got many, many years of business experience and many, many years of helping different people and different businesses and so on and so forth. So it's not difficult um, for me to provide a bit of guidance and that's exactly what I'm gonna do through as we go through creating, uh, step two, creating a profitable menu. Okay, so what we're gonna cover, okay? Um, first, five big tips on menu creation. So you know exactly, um, essentially exactly what you, um, need to put on your menu to be most profitable, okay? Um, the three big questions you have to ask yourself to be sure that you're actually on a winner, okay? Um, the three times of the day that you wanna consider, okay? Um, and I'm gonna go through so show you some different example menus, good, bad, otherwise, okay? Uh, um, and then as, as per step one, we'll talk about some action steps going forward. So tips, first, um, you want to minimize items, okay? Um, quite often, someone will ring me up and they'll go, okay, I want to get a food trailer. I said, okay, cool. Do you know what food trailer you like, okay? Mostly, um, they will probably know, I like this type of food trailer. For example, it might be the Maxi, right? And I go, okay, cool. Do you have any idea of what type of food that you want to do, okay? And um, people that are clear will know exactly what they want to do, okay? People that are unclear, they'll go, I want to do hot dogs, um, fish and chips, maybe some burgers, we want to do cake sandwiches, and um, maybe we'll sell some packaged food as well. Oh uh, yeah, and we'll do coffee, and I was thinking about having a couple of kebab machines as well, and um, yeah, my, my husband's got this idea for this other thing. So they don't really know their menu, okay? That's why step two is the menu. Step one is knowing your market, as in where you're gonna be, what your location will be, and step two is your menu. Even if the menu is a starting point, okay, the most important thing to do is minimize the items. So less is more. So you have basically five main items, three drinks, and three sides. Now, if you've ever watched the movie The Founder, um, which is about the start of McDonald's, they essentially, if my memory serves me correctly, they essentially started with um, a hamburger, I think a cheeseburger, some fries, and milkshake. Four or five items, that's all, okay? And now, if anything, McDonald's is expanded like crazy and they just keep adding things in because there's so many other choices these days, right? And people lose less and less interest. But less equals more, especially when you're running stuff on a smaller scale, okay? You don't have have to have a massive, massive, massive range. You look at a... Um, a company like, for example, Lord of the Fries, they have about six burgers, I think three hot dogs, and a range of different chips. And the big thing that they change is out is the size. They're just examples. Um, more, less is more, okay? Five main items, three drinks, three sides, okay? That's a starting point. You can build off there because people keep asking you for things, um, then you can build off there. Recently, I was helping a... Um, it's sort of a food business, a, a bar. And um, basically, out of all its income, seven drinks made half their money. Okay, seven drinks made half their money. The balance was just made up of bits and pieces like one drink here, one drink there, okay? Once they understood those seven drinks, what they did is go, okay, cool. How can we make more drinks like these seven drinks and bring more money from the most popular stuff? That's understanding the 80-20 rule and having less is more, okay? Um, you wanna add profit enhancers as well, okay? So people can buy the burger and you know stop and think about it for a minute, look around, okay? It's not uncommon to pay somewhere between 10 and $15 these days for a burger, okay? And then they go, okay, cool. Would you want fries with that? And then would you want this with that? Would you want this? You can have fries, you can have onion rings, you can add things onto it, okay? Add things on, add drinks. Um, Build a build a package deal. Think of think of KFC. You're driving a KFC, forty bucks. You get this, this, and this. A couple of things you don't really want anyway, but you buy it because it's easy to do and it increases your overall transaction value, right? Yeah, create package deals like I said. Um, you really want to consider your passion, right? As in what you like to cook and what you like to deal with, but also the market wants. Okay, if you have some gourmet thing that costs a small fortune to produce, okay, because of the certain type of ingredients and stuff like that, then sometimes, mathematically, that's not gonna add up. It's gonna be too expensive. If you can only sell it for $10 and it costs you $7 to make it, it might seem like you're making a little bit of profit, but you're not thinking with a business head. You have to modify that and design it so 
it's what the market wants, it's not what the market is willing to pay. And you can look at other people selling stuff and already see what the market's willing to pay, okay? And then adjust accordingly, okay? Um, you wanna make sure you niche, not everything, okay? So if you wanted to sell Greek food, sell Greek food. If you wanna sell hot dogs, sell hot dogs. If you wanna sell fish and chips, sell fish and chips. If you wanna sell cakes and coffee, sell cakes and coffee. If you wanna sell kebabs and fries, sell kebabs and fries, okay? Go to any food court and you'll walk around and you'll see that the most successful ones is niche, okay? McDonald's, that's a niche as it sells burgers and fries, basically. KFC, you know you're getting fried chicken and chips, right? Um, if you go to, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but any uh, any kebab store, they're selling kebabs. That's what they're selling, okay? Um, if you go to ice cream shop, they're selling ice cream. If you go to a Chinese buffet, they're selling Chinese, okay? If they're selling sushi, they're selling sushi. The places that sell everything under the sun are the ones that struggle because it's always the 80-20 rule. Um, you can always ask the local businesses as well as in what's most popular. For example, you can go to a local business and then go, okay, cool. Um, what's most popular um, in this particular um, um, area? And what, what's your most popular food? What do people eat? Go there as a customer. If you go there trying to say that you're a business, then it's not gonna go down too well. Think if someone did that to you, but go there as a customer, ask them what's most popular. So the five big questions you wanna ask yourself, okay? Um, what does my market want? What will my market eat, okay? You know, um, for, for example, an easy example that comes to mind, okay? Take Byron Bay in New South Wales. There's a lot of vegans and vegetarians there, okay? So that menu would do pretty well, okay? But if you took that same menu into other areas, there'll still be vegans and vegetarian, but not do as well. But something, for example, like smoked meat but might do a hell of a lot better because different type of market, different type of eating habit and so on and so forth. So you gotta consider that as your location because that's why we put location first because that then leads into the menu, okay? Um, What's lacking in the market, okay? What's not around, okay? Sometimes it's like late at night, there's no food for for um, people that leave establishments, okay? There's no food for them. So that is, that you can plug into that. You gotta be willing to work those hours, obviously, but you can plug into it, okay? Um, what hours do I wanna work? Because if you say I wanna run a kebab machine between um, 10 p.m. And, and 2 a.m., okay? that's probably not gonna work for you if you prefer to get up early in the morning, not stay up at night. You gotta consider that as well, right? Um, what can I do to increase my average sale? It's not about being the cheapest, it's about what can you do to increase your average sale, okay? Rather than sell a burger for $10 because you think that's all you'll pay for it, you sell it for 13 or you sell it for 16 with chips, for example, okay? You wanna increase that average sale because the higher you increase that average sale, the less people you need and the more money that you'll make with the less people. You get more people, you make even more money. That's how successful food operators operate, okay? Think about fine dining restaurants, okay? Yeah, they pay high quality uh, ingredients. Yeah, they pay a lot of rent, but think about it logically. They charge much more than a normal restaurant and they give you less. It's fine dining because you sometimes have to look at your plate and wonder where the actual food is. It might taste good, but there's not much of it. That's why they make so much profit and they can charge so much because it's perceived value. Okay, you gotta understand that. Um, how much money do you wanna earn? We're gonna talk about the mathematics a little bit later on in step four, okay? And I'm gonna literally spreadsheet and show you exactly how many people per head, average sale and so on, so I'll break it down, okay? But um, you have to know how much money do you wanna earn? You can't just go out there blind. You can't just say, well, I wanna earn um, $200 a day or I wanna earn as much as possible. You have to have some sort of plan because once you have a plan, then you can work out a plan on how you can actually achieve that goal, okay? Um, so different times, different menus, okay? Think about it. If you're willing to work the hours and it comes down to what hours you're willing to work, you're paying your costs of, you bought your trailer, um, you bought your bits and pieces and so on. So if you're paying all that, right? So you wanna consider, um, you wanna consider um, exactly how, um, how much you wanna work. You can consider different people working for you, different shifts and so on and so forth, right? So. Um, morning, obviously, from 6 a.m. till 10 a.m., okay? Think McDonald's, it's breakfast stuff, you know what I mean? Bacon and egg rolls, depending who you are. But any menu can be changed. I remember um, not so long ago, I was in Melbourne 
and um, they were selling crepes in the menu. So they had the breakfast crepe, and then during the day they had more savory crepe for lunch. You know, um, consider what you can take out of your ingredients and minimize your ingredients and make a morning menu. Then consider what you can take and have a lunch menu. And remember, there'll always be a quiet time between morning and lunch. It means it gives you some downtime and so on and so forth to, to, to swap over, okay? And then dinner time, what can be dinner? Some of the lunch stuff can be carried over to dinner. Sometimes the price point for lunch of the same item, the item might have to be reduced in size smallly, and then, then it's carried over um, to um, 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 dinner, if that makes sense. Costings. The reason why you want to, well, one of the reason why you want to minimize what you've actually, um, what actual products that you're selling and so on and so forth, okay, um, is simply the less that you're having to purchase, the less that will go to wastage, okay, and the more you can um, reuse an item. Like, for example, if you could buy a chicken breast and use that five different ways, okay, that gives you five different options because that could be turned into chicken knuckle, chicken nut, nut chicken nuggets it could be turned into a chicken schnitzel right it could be um um turned into um literally a chicken breast sole for example right and it could be turned into um um chicken strips for example or it could be turned into whatever you want right within the chicken so if you you can have five different things on your menu that's all slightly different but you essentially the same ingredient the more you can do that it minimizes what you need to carry right um you want to aim for a cost of food between 20 and 30%. Now, here's the thing, right? Don't just solely rely on that because it's also perceived value. Because you can, if you can um, have something you can sell for the cost of it is, for example, 10% and it costs you $2 to make something, you can sell it for 20 bucks. Good on you, do it. That's fine, right? Um, you want to consider upsells to increase the average um, um the average sale. So for example, someone goes, yeah, I want burger, chips, and so on and so forth. If there's something else you can upsell them. Think of KFC, that they will sell a chocolate mousse, okay, to someone because they go burger, chips, drink, and then they've got chocolate mousse. Um, there's there's chocolate mousse literally sitting inside their cabinet that, that someone can pick up and take with them. That's an additional upsell that if you start asking the question, okay, um, then people might buy it, okay? And if, the next, if it costs you 50 cents to make it and you get an extra $2, that's money for simply for the asking, okay? Um, also, sometimes um, going to places like Coles and Woolworths is better than um, wholesale supplies like Bidvest and Campbell's and stuff like that as regards to getting your overall costs lower and your costs are good for your actual um, your food, okay? So, some example menus, good, bad, and otherwise, okay? So here's a very, very basic, straightforward menu, okay? And if you look at it, and I'll get the cursor on the screen here. So a um, couple of small items here, okay? A couple of combo items here, and then a um, couple of bigger items here. Now, I don't know the exact restaurant this would be or anything like that. Um, the only thing I'd try to do personally, if it was me, if these are nine, they may as well pay 10, and essentially you could have all these at $10, you know what I mean? So then it's ridiculously simple, and here, if that's six, and um, I don't, this one here might end up down here, I don't know, right? You could probably have five, five, um, 10, 10, 10, right? And then the indulge plate, you know, if it doesn't sound, how can you indulge for an extra $2? Maybe the indulge plate wants to be 15, okay? It's adjusting the the, um, the, the prices and so on and so forth, right? So um that's just an example of but this is still a good menu because it's simple okay it's simple and it's basic okay um so that's good so this is another one of good okay very simple very straightforward now if you look at it they essentially got a couple of they got a couple of um um small items here okay one two three four five six so they're basically very very simple they've done something really good here as well is they've actually named the actual items okay me personally, once again, I'd adjust these prices to simplify it even further. So I go, okay, cool, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15, right? Every burger is 15, okay? And then this one, I'd have to know what that is. Maybe that's 10 and maybe that's five. So it's 10, 10, five. And then people can look at the price and understand what the actual price will be 
and it relates back to value and so on and so forth. This is some basic examples, okay? Um, this is, this is another one um, of a bad menu. I wouldn't say it's bad, bad, but it's a lot harder to read, okay? And there's all these, it's it's good in a way, but it's bad because there's so many different options because they've got tacos, they've got the sides here, they've got wraps, they've got sandwiches, they've got trash place. Um, this is obviously a theme around, it's literally called the garbage truck, okay? Um, and it's obviously for America being the West Coast, okay? But you get the idea. They've got low price items up here personally, I'd go, okay, cool. What are we actually selling the most of here? And try and um, uh, narrow it down a bit just so you've got a better chance. It's hard to read through the middle here. It's not a bad, bad menu, but I'm just trying to give you some ideas and tips of what I picked up over time uh, working with so many different um, food trail operators and so on and so forth, right? This one here is really, really hard to read, okay? So it's basic enough, but it's all over the place, okay? And being all over the place, it makes it confusing. Plus, people seeing all these like five dollars fifty. Honestly, in many ways, they should all be five dollars fifty because it just makes it simple, or even better, make it six bucks and be done with it. Okay, and then this is a sort of all over the place and so on and so forth. So um, it's a hard to read menu. And then up here, it looks like the title, but it's actually um, it says um, it's good dog. So you know, maybe that's the five dollar one, and everything else is six dollars. This and then everything's. Um, simplified so it's a lot easier to read okay um this is actually a good example uh, a breakfast menu it's very very baked but um straightforward obviously it's american because we don't have chicken and waffle in australia okay but um it's four things and four things oh sorry five things and a couple of drinks that's it very basic very simple okay and that really helps people just go bang, make a decision because the more decisions, more items that people are put in front of it, the more difficult it is for them to make a decision when they're on the fly, especially if they don't um, quite understand what it is. Obviously, pictures and so on and so forth on your menu will really help simplify your menu. Put a picture, they can see exactly what they're getting, right? And bang, bang, they keep going, okay? So let's just recap, okay? So we've gone through the five big tips on uh, menu creation, okay? We talked about the three big questions um, to ensure you're on an actual winner um, within, within your menu. So the questions that you have to ask, okay? Um, we talked about the three times of the day that you want to consider, okay? We talked about costings and saving stuff, and we've gone through some example menus, okay? So let's look at the action steps of what we want to do, okay? So first, you want to make a draft menu. Keep it simple, pick a niche. If you've got a certain type of food or style that resonates with you, you know, you might be Indian and you like cooking Indian food. You might have, you might just want to do coffee in case there's nothing wrong with that, right? Whatever it is, doesn't matter what type of food it is or how it is is um, um, done or anything like that. Just keep it simple is all I'm saying. Keep it simple, okay? Um, work out your costings. Sometimes it's just going to be as simple as um, going to Coles Online or Woolworths Online and breaking down your costings so you know what things cost, right? Start cooking if you, if you haven't prepared these items. Chances are you have probably already prepared these items. Start cooking and start to get some photographs of the stuff, okay? Um, and basically start to um, work out your actual menu and you can work out your end prices. So I'll just stop here for a minute and go through a little walkthrough of the XL 2.0. This gives you a bit of a rundown um, with this particular trailer. Interestingly enough, the XL 2.0 is a really, really popular trailer. Um, couple of things before we go through the video you'll see it's got a gas deep fryer and a gas griddle okay we also put a firewall here to make sure it complies but i'll go through the video and um give you a quick run through of that to give you a bit of explanation on um the xl um 2.0 hey there matt here i wanted to show you about a xl 2.0 now the difference between the xl and the xl 2.0 the few upgrades that we want to do to make it bigger better and maybe bolder you might say right first We've added a dual axle, okay? The dual axle takes the GVM from um, 1,490 kilos up to 1,990 kilos. So it's got disc brakes, mechanical disc brakes, so you don't have to worry about electric, electric brakes, but it gives a lot more capacity with the actual trailer, right? We've also upgraded to gas. So we had electric deep fryer and electric griddle, but we've now actually um, added gas work, a gas deep fryer, and a gas griddle. And you can see it fits pretty well spot on in here, okay? We've made the range hood bigger, we put a firewall at the back, and we also put stainless steel um, along, each, along each end and also on the roof as well. So we've really, really upgraded the trailer. Now, the XL before was 24,990 plus GST. 
The cost of this has now gone up to $29,900 plus GST. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if it becomes one of our most popular trailers, three meters long, right? Um, if you stop and look around the actual trailer, uh, essentially you've got your gas bottles for your gas work here, okay? Uh, you've also got your handbrake for your mechanical brakes and so on and so forth, jockey wheel and so on and so forth. We actually have the window on the front, obviously just like the original XL, it gives you a lot of um, air to go through and so on and so forth, okay? It makes life a little bit easier for you. Uh, coming around here to have a look, a little bit of a look inside. It's similar to the original XL inside, okay? But plenty of height, you gotta understand, I'm six foot four, right? Still plenty of height, okay? There's not many people that much taller than me. Your triple sinks, obviously being, uh, when you're in Queensland, we'll put a little um, hook around here so it complies. Your stainless steel here, stainless steel here. There's a firewall here. A lot of people don't understand, right? You have to have a proper firewall here to comply, okay? A lot of people have no idea about that, right? There's another thing as well. 304 grade stainless steel. Most people cannot tell the difference in between 304 and 204. A lot of food trailers, you see the cheap and nasty ones out there, they're made with 204 or even lower grades of stainless steel. What that means is it rusts like within months, okay? This is 304, top grade stainless steel, thicker, and it's also higher grade, essentially um, is better. Now, um, your gas griddle, okay, your 750 millimeter gas griddle, okay, and then also your um, deep fryer for your chips and so on and so forth. All stainless around here, stainless around here, the range hood, everything complies to Australian standards, okay, uh, everything signed off and so on and so forth. Um, the, the range hood has drip filters here and so on and so forth. If you jump in here and spin around, we'll swap sides, jump in, come through, and spin around, and you'll see Everything done properly electrically, right? You gotta understand electrical has to be done 100% correct. So we have an independent um, Australian certified electrician sign off on it, okay? Um, fire blanket, if you spin around that way, you got the fire blanket and fire extinguisher. This is the XL 2.0. Now, common additions that people might actually add to this trailer, okay? Wanna add a coffee machine? No problems. Wanna add a grinder? No problems, okay? Wanna add a actual um, gas cooktop? no problems. If you want to add um, a food warmer, no problems. There's heaps of stuff you can add in, okay? Um, fridge, freezer, it's compact, it's easy to get going and so on and so forth. We can mount microwaves up the, once you finish looking at that, we can, we can, we can mount microwaves up here and so on and so forth. They literally have a microwave bracket. You've got good quality stainless steel um, taps and so on and so forth. Under here, your hot and cold water. This is actually the splash guard right here. Oops. This is a splash guard for Queensland. It's got plastic on it at the moment, so we just peel that plastic off, and essentially it's a clear splash guard. You can see, you see, you see the it clips, peels off, right? And that makes sure it complies for Queensland. We guarantee compliance on all our trailers, okay? If there's an issue with compliance, um, then we'll fix it, no problems at all. But we guarantee compliance in all council areas. Other little things that we do, the sliding doors on the cabinets, okay? You need sliding doors. There's like food trailers out there, they sell them and essentially they have nothing underneath there. There's shit, the, the, I mean, this stuff just comes flying out. It's not really good. Anyway, this is the XL, XL 2.0, $29,900 plus your GST. Add Reg on top of that, you can pick it up, we can deliver it wherever you are, doesn't matter, okay? Um, make sure you make contact us with us. Fill in the form at foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. Go to um, um, office at foodtrailerking.com.au or um, give us a phone call. Look forward to helping you with your new food trailer. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that little walkthrough. So if you feel like you know enough already and um, essentially are good to go, go, you can go ahead and contact us if you want to get started in your own food trailer, okay? Um, you can go to office at foodtrailer.com.au, send us, drop us an email there. Um, make sure you leave your contact details or you give us a call on 1300 247 066. Um, also, if you do want to watch an extended tour of um, all our food trailers, you can go to foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three and check out an extended tour of our actual food trailers. Okay, so step number three. Securing cash flow producing delivery and takeaway options, okay? So getting in a position where you can deliver and have takeaway happening, okay? So um, what we're gonna cover, so different delivery options, um, pickup options as well, so people can obviously come and pick up stuff if they need to, okay? Um, 
the pros and cons on charging for delivery. Sometimes it's not the smartest way of dealing with things charging for delivery. And I'll show you some ways that you can increase your order value by not charging delivery. And then also getting delivery orders. And I'll show you different ways where you can basically get people to start coming directly to you for the delivery orders. So you're not paying fees all the time to the different apps and so on and so forth. And then as usual, some action steps so you can take the next step going forward, okay? So um, why delivery? Really, um, two big reasons. Reason one is if you give people more options, it equals more sales. So the more places they can find you, okay, um, then the more places, the more chances you've got of getting a sale, okay? And remember, um, especially if you use some of the bits and pieces like um, I'll talk about in regards to um, loyalty and getting customers' details. You can build a lot on that, okay? Um, so the easier you make it for someone to buy, then essentially the more money you actually make. So let's look at delivery options. Obviously, you've got Uber Eats, which you can go through and uh, um, join Uber Eats, okay? You've got Deliveroo, which is obviously different comp competition. Menu Log. Um, you can also have your own driver, okay? So you can have your own people delivering stuff, okay? And that's not an uncommon way of doing it. If you go back and think about it, the days before, um, example, um, Uber Eats and so on and so forth, right? And there wasn't a network of delivery drivers available. Your locals, for example, um, pizza shop, you'd ring up and then they have their own person that would come out and deliver it to you, okay? That still applies. That can work, okay? Especially if you've got someone else that um, there can be someone working for you or alternatively, um, it can be someone that um, um, is doing it on a per piece item. There's a whole range of different options, okay? Um, other other things like eat now and so on and so forth, right? So there's a bunch of different options as far as um, um, different apps. You just got to go through. There's probably about a half a dozen more of them, okay? But they're really the main ones, okay? So pick up what options. So you got people literally walking by. If you have a location like I showed you earlier on, in regards to the um, in regards to the actual um, the area with that big block of land or any of the locations, so people will walk by. If you're in a service station, people will pop up and they'll be there, right? Um, repeat business, okay? So once you get a customer once, people have to eat every day, as I'm sure that you're aware. So basically what happens is, uh, once you build a database, people will come back to you. Obviously you gotta be delivering good food and so on and so forth. So that part I would highly recommend, right? Um, local businesses, okay? so. If you're in our area, local businesses can come and buy food off you. Um, they're working away, doing what they're doing. They can literally come to you and pick up, okay? Um, you can charge for delivery if you like. I honestly believe that the free option is better by having, a, for example, a minimum order of $20. Like it becomes mathematically difficult um, to when someone rings up and orders a bottle of Coke for $3 to come and deliver that because it's like obviously you're losing money at that point, right? But you have a minimum order, you can choose one of the minimum order. Even $30 is not um, not a bad number for minimum order because it's not hard to hit that number. Even a single person um, buying food singly for themselves, it's not hard to hit $30 number, okay? Um, and then um, we'll talk about in a minute actually getting delivery orders as well. So charging for delivery, people love free, okay? Um, you can adjust your menu prices to cover it, okay? I believe the best option is leaving your menu prices the same and just having a minimum order for delivery, okay? Um, yeah, create a minimum free delivery order, okay? Um, you wanna make sure, as I said earlier, you wanna go in there and sign up with the different apps. So sign up and, and jump through the hoops so you can be registered for them, okay? Ideally, the more photos you got of your food, the better off you'll be as well because if people can visually see what they're getting, it's always a good thing, right? Um, Build your own database as well, okay? So um, there's lots of different ways of building a database, okay? You can do it as simple as an Excel spreadsheet. It gets cumbersome, but, right? Or you can use a um, loyalty app, something like, um, ironically, it's nearly the same as Uber, but it's not Uber, it's eber.co, um, okay? And um, that's a loyalty app. There's plenty, of, if, you, if you look for restaurant loyalty app on Google, for example, you'll find heaps of them. You can just choose the one that's right for you. 
And once you get the details, it means you can push notifications out to them. And you want to get one that can SMS them as well. And for example, SMS them and say, hey, it's blah, blah, blah. We're having a special tonight. It costs you next to nothing. And you'll literally be run off your feet once you build up your database, okay? Um, you want to also consider creating a special order, okay? Um, you can use thing, you can use automated messages on Facebook as well, okay? Um, and you want to consider creating a spe um, special for so, you. So for example, right? If you build your database and when someone comes in, then you um, go, okay, let me have your details so I can, I can put you on our loyalty app, okay? And when you order next, we'll give you this free, like give them a free dessert. It's gonna cost you next to nothing. Even if you don't have desserts, you still get prepackaged stuff that you can add to your range, put in the fridge or freezer, especially when you're using the um, bigger trailers like a maxi or super size, you can fit in there and then literally hand it to them, okay? Um, yeah. You can offer um, delivery to your takeaway customers. Now, if you've got customers that are used to coming in, that's fine, right? But some of your takeaway customers might not be bothered um, coming out on whatever particular day. Perhaps it's raining, okay? So rather than sit there and go, oh, it's raining, I'm not going to do anything, right? If you know it's raining, it's raining all day, then you can use your database through push notifications, through Facebook Messenger, through SMS, to basically go back and say, hey, um, I know that you're, um, it's raining today, we're delivering, um, here's a link to our menu and the menu's banged right there on your website, right? Um, yeah, and word of mouth. So people, once they get to know you to make good food, right? Um, you can literally have word of mouth of people coming to you so, so people will literally pass you on. I'm sure you've had that happen before. Um, someone's ate somewhere, they thought it was good and they've told you about it, okay? Same sort of deal. So let's recap what we've gone through. So we've gone through the di different delivery options, okay? Um, the pickup options as well, okay? The pros and cons about charging for delivery and essentially getting delivery orders okay um so the action steps you want to take um write down all the ways you can get customers for takeaway and delivery okay think about local businesses local places in the area and so on and so forth right literally write them down i've given you the basically answers you've got to make your own personal list okay um choose a loyalty app there's bunches of them out there just pick one that you feel right for you okay um and then basically that's your step three completed okay so just going to stop here and go through a little walkthrough of the actual Maxi Elite food trailer. Um, the Maxi Elite is one of our most popular trailers as well, basically because it's literally got everything, fridge, freezer, um, gas, the whole lot, right? Anyway, I'll, I'll let the video speak for itself and I'll take you on a little walkthrough. Let's go over to the, um, the Maxi Elite, which conveniently I've placed in the middle of the actual street. That's our factory there. You see we've got a pretty good big setup. It's actually quite quiet today. We've got Burrell next door and a whole heap of other businesses down there. And um, literally it is like a ghost town on the weekends, but during the week it's super busy. Now, this is conveniently for your convenience, placed in the middle of the street, the actual uh, Maxi Elite. So if we go through each part, okay, just be clear, the Maxi has less things in it essentially than the Maxi Elite. The Maxi Elite goes to uh, $39,900 plus GST, but I've got a lot of upgrades. So I'm gonna go through literally from the bottom and work our way through it, okay? First, you've got your super strong chassis and so on and so forth, just like in the actual um, Maxi, okay? Now, under here, you'll see all the tanks and so on and so forth. Your gray water tank, your fresh water tank is up the front there, okay? Um, the downside of being on the asphalt is that it hurts your knees a bit when you're going down. Anyway, um, over and above that, this has mechanical brakes. A lot of people think, do I need electric brakes, etc., etc. Up to two tons, so this uh, trailer weighs just on 1,200 kilos as it sits now with everything I showed you, okay? So it's actual loaded capacity, so the maximum capacity and go is two ton. So that gives you 800 kilos of um, carrying capacity, which is a lot of capacity. Like you'd be flat out putting 800 kilos in there to be honest with you, okay? So first and foremost, one of the most important things is your gas work has to be actually certified. Now, it doesn't have the actual plate on there. Normally it has a plate, but this is all properly certified gas work that's put in by a proper gas fitter. You can so you can put your two um, um, bottles on there, so you're sort of good to go in that regard. Um, as per, you'll see me talking about in other videos, we've got multiple inlets here, okay? Each one of these is a 15 ounce circuit. By the far, the best way of running uh, your electrical, simply because uh, you can run, like so you can literally plug it in and plug it in at an event or where you've got power, you might be at home. Um, one circuit will run the fridge, the hot water, um, the lights and so on and so forth. And then this other circuit will run 
a high current electrical equipment like for example a coffee machine or um, there's another circuit here you could use for an oven or whatever but this one's additional this is sort of standard but we we talk about that and i'll sort of refine that and make sure everything trailer is right it sort of happens in the background without you even knowing because the main thing is we want an easy views and when you're out there talking to your friends and other people that have food businesses that they ask you where you got the food trailer from you say food trailer king you're totally happy with everything we don't we, we want you to refer okay um so that's basically a very very quick run down the outside of course you've got your gas struts and so on and so forth so we'll walk around and actually go inside and have a look inside the actual trailer okay so first of all um, with the maxi elite what we've done is upgraded quite a few things okay so you've got the upgraded floor this is a non-slip floor the councils absolutely love this floor okay then over and above that and if you're worried about the big step there there's little steps that we can give you that you can come in with we've actually got a second fridge freezer in here okay so we've added that so in the maxi it normally only has one we've now got two okay over and above that as well we've actually got a drinks fridge now this drinks fridge isn't screwed in at this point in time but it gives you extra fridge capacity because this one here you can turn it up or down to wherever all this stuff we've got 12 months warranty so you don't have to stress about warranties we don't do things like try and change the the name of um fridges we leave the original manufacturer's um, name on there so you know where it actually come from we don't try and pretend it's something else okay all this stuff um no problems with warranties now your um your actual um um sinks and so on and so forth your double bowl and then your single bowl once again as i've discussed before you can put this however you like it so essentially to comply with council regulations they like to know that it's safe with a splash guard this one in particular we put a um, three-sided splash guard so you don't have any issues with council once again people are all worried about council like to think it's a big problem it's really easy we'll take you straight through the process once you become the customer it's very very simple obviously every trailer has to comply we know all the things and all the different councils because we've had trailers all over different councils now you would have saw previously in the maxi the six burner okay and you would saw it in the super size the four burner most people are going for these four burners you can have a two four or six it's pretty much the same price your choice right um over and above that this has been left open in case you wanted to add other machinery in here uh, anything else you could put a chip warmer you can put an extra griddle some people like a second griddle here um you can add whatever you want no problems whatsoever um, then you come down to the gas griddle now you'll see that we've actually mounted this up higher now the reason why we mount these up higher nice and easy to clean underneath for yourself okay then plus over the top it's easier it's a nicer height to work at now over and above that as well you'll notice the gas work in here this is not actually connected up this particular one but when it is that's why there's no plate on there on the front of it when it is it's all that's when we put the plate on it's all certified the gas works all 100 right and it's all good to go but this is not, not hooked up yet right and neither is the um, gas deep fry uh, important thing we've got the emergency shut off valve so this is very important it's all part of your registration that we do for you the stainless steel backing here we put this uh, as a um, upgrade for you okay it's all part of the the maxi elite okay then probably one of the biggest things we do we actually take the um gas uh the electric deep fryer remove that and put a uh, gas deep fryer in now your recovery rate is so much better your capacity is so much better as you can see you've got two decent sized baskets there nice brand new gas deep fryer now um as i show you on the super size video super 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 easy right with the maxi elite you simply open that up okay there's a valve right here simply screw that in so when you're ready to go you literally empty your oil out and then you can use your oil next time or recycle it or whatever you need to do okay this goes down so all the oil comes out nice and easy obviously please don't try it when it's hot and then just that just sit, basically sits straight on top there so all pretty straightforward and easy once again um as i cover off in other trailers there's cupboards everywhere all right so this you can put your oil in or you can put other bits and pieces in one of the most important things you must understand you'll see trailers around the place that don't actually have any cupboards essentially um they've got a bench and legs and that's it it becomes a massive massive problem when you're trying to travel um, you really need to have covered so it stops stuff flying around if you remember with a food trailer it's like um, a caravan or a camper van you pack it up and you unpack it it doesn't take long to set it up it's really really fast and away you go okay you've all, all got your um, shatterproof um, low voltage led lights okay so when you're running a circuit one circuit of this van the way these vans hooked up at this exact point in time 
gas work, gas work, gas work. So zero power obviously involved there, okay? So it makes it the best way possible, okay? That's why we created the Maxi Elite. Then uh, fridge, Bay Marie, fridge, um, um, uh, display fridge. And then down here, underneath here, of course, we've got our normal hot water system, okay? That all run off one generator, okay? You've also got your little jack in here. Bits and pieces we always add in. Some stuff I don't even tell you about, and then people get surprised and go, wow, this is good. I just had a customer here earlier and was just absolutely amazed at the quality of the trailers. He'd been, he'd been looking around and saw the, the quality of our trailers, okay? Because it takes a lot of effort um, to get it right, okay? So um, everything is basically set up, um, good to go. As usual, some people laugh at me. First, you're probably laughing at me for setting up in the middle of the road, right? Um, second of all, you're probably laughing because I'm gonna show you again the easy, super easy drop down jacks and these wind up and down nice and easy. So it doesn't matter who you are, I'll just get the little handle for it. We obviously include the handle for you. So if, if there's one lady by herself setting up, it's super easy, you just wind it up. It's virtually no effort at all. It's slowly winding up, okay? Um, the trailers are really well balanced. Actually, the customer that was here before was actually saying, holy crap, I got inside other trailers, they flip up. Yours are well balanced, they don't even flip up, and he's in one of the smaller trailers, right? So that goes down, and then to stabilize it, you just turn that, and then you just literally wind it down super, super easy, and just puts a little bit of weight on it. It's no problems whatsoever. You can actually lift the entire trailer off the ground if you want to. There's really no need, and then when you're done, it's like that. So don't get caught out with um, cheap and nasty other versions, okay? Um, just other little things that we do. Part of your gas, um, your gas certification is, for obviously everything has to be Australian standards. You'll see here, this vent obviously runs through both sides. That's the safety thing, because um, to have it properly certified for gas, it's got to have vents, so in case of a gas leak, it can come out, and obviously the emergency shutoff valve as well. Over and above that as well, we had these vents. This allows the, the fridge to actually breathe and allows it to um, stay a lot cool, especially on hot days as well, okay? Um, that really, really helps. Your Bay Marie and so on and so forth, and of course your gas work. Your electrical is all certified. We'll probably shoot back around here because some people wonder, is it to Australian standards? It's all, there's a lot of things, that unless you realize, Unless you know in advance, that's why the whole goal is to educate as much as possible, okay? Unless you know in advance, you don't understand. So this, for example, that's all being tested and tagged by an electrician, okay? So we know that the actual, um, the electrical system is um, safe because it's all been signed off by an electrician, everything's been checked and so on and so forth. There is really a lot of effort that goes into um, sorting out all these trailers. You'll see over here, the factory that I've got, it's not a small setup. There's, you play a dangerous game shopping purely on price, okay? Because you're better off paying a little bit extra, even if you have to put it on finance, to make sure you got the proper 12 months warranty, make sure that someone's invested this money for an actual setup, make sure that you've got covers under your benches, make sure that everything's gonna run, and I'll take the time after you've watched this video to go through questions and so on and so forth with you to make sure it's all clear, okay? So, if we spin back around into our nice empty street and like, Really, there is no one traveling around because it is actually um, Saturday. This is the Maxi Elite, so it's a step up from the Maxi. So you can get the Maxi as it sits or you can upgrade to the Maxi Elite. In a summary, over and above the actual Maxi, the stainless steel backing it's got. It's got a second fridge freezer in there. It's the electric deep fryer has been changed to an actual gas deep fryer. And it's got the um, above bench, um, it's got the above bench um, um, drinks fridge. It's a whole heap of extra stuff. So it's about roughly all that adds up to give or take around about um, um, six grand, okay? Which is not a lot extra to pay for an extra fridge. Even those fridges are a couple, uh, two and a half grand a piece, you know what I mean? The drinks fridge is, you know, 900 bucks. These all bits and pieces all add up. Then basically good to go. So $39,900 plus your GST. Basically you're good to go. And um, um, if you've got any more questions or you need to know anything else, um, go to office at foodtrailerking.com.au. Just drop us an email, say, hey, Matt, I've watched the video, what's the DVD? I want to know a bit more. Can you contact me? Um, I need finance or whatever. Um, or you can uh, go to foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. There's a little form you can fill out underneath there, okay? Uh, or you can just give us a call and we'll basically go through any other questions you got. Then we'll get it underway. Um, these days we just take $100 refundable deposit, put in your system, raise the invoice, send it out, 
give you a chance to sort your finances out, any other questions and so on and so forth. Then we do a 50% payment, put everything in production, and when it's ready to go, you make your final payment, and then you pick it up or we get it delivered, send it anywhere in Australia, it's really no problems. Like I said, we've got a pretty good setup behind. Um, hope that helped you, and hope that explained the difference in between the Maxi and the Maxi Elite and all these different things that we spent a lot of time doing, hey, really, really a lot of time uh, doing to make something just right for you. So when you're out in sight, um, um, talk, uh, talking to people, you're saying, hey, the food trailer king looked after us. And ironically, not only are we in the middle of the street, it's raining now as well. So instead of standing in the rain, I'm going to stand under here and say goodbye and I'll um, see you in the next video. Okay, so if you feel like you know enough already and are good to go, please go ahead and contact us at office at foodtrailerking.com.au or 1300 247 066. Um, or you can also watch an extended tour of our food trailers at foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. Um, I'd highly recommend finishing this if you not to feel that like you need to cover off the next two, two steps, step four and five, right? Um, however, if you just want to get into it and, and you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you watch it. It goes, does go for a while, but I go through literally every trailer, not in this sort of format, but live, like I've showed you the other trailers. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay, step four, how much money can you make? So you've figured out where your location is, right? You've worked out your menu, you've worked out your takeaway and delivery options, right? Now you go, okay, cool, how much money can I make? And that photo there, if you're interested is, that's actually our maxi food truck, okay? So some people, they prefer to, um, they prefer to, um, um, have a truck so it's not a trailer they don't have to worry about reversing it and so on and so forth we built these on a brand spanking new mitsubishi fuso mitsubishi fuso are the actual most popular truck in all of australia most popular light truck they're automatic okay they can be driven on a car license okay reversing camera um they've got the the stuff out the front so it'll it'll um hazard warning system it's got all the um bells and whistles as you can as you can imagine um there's a full detailed video of that if you want to see it at the food trailer king um food trailer king.com.au forward slash step three okay so so what we want to cover in um, step four so um why plan you need to plan out the mathematics on how much money you can make okay because if you don't plan it don't think about it then it's just guesswork okay and really i see a lot of people make a lot of money in this game and i see other people just sort of flounder and not really get anywhere and the difference is they didn't plan okay that's all it came down to it okay that's part of the reason why i also put this um training together because i thought it was time for um people to really really understand on how they can really make money out of their food trailers okay um we're going to go through some tips okay so different tips in regards to your yeah, um uh, mathematics and then the overall breakdown of costs as well, right? And then we're gonna go through some actual action steps as per at the end of each step. So why plan? Think about it for a minute, okay? At the end of the day, passion will only take you so far, okay? Passion will only take you so far. You can have the greatest passion for the greatest food and so on and so forth, but if you don't know how to plan, and how to get customers, you know, you can be a great chef, but no one ever knows you, okay? Uh, or a great cook or cre make great food. So it's really um, important to plan it. This is, once again, while I put together these five simple steps, so I can help you get going in your food trail as quickly and easily as possible, okay? Um, understanding the maths and stick it to, sticking to it will push you uh, even further in your actual um, food trailer business, okay? Okay. Um, once you see how much money you can make, right? Even if you're sitting on the sidelines and not sure if you really want to get in a food trailer, you'd be crazy not to follow it through. Because I've looked around and no one has put together a complete step-by-step -step guide that is contained that we've literally gone through right at the moment. No one. It doesn't exist. And I've used my years of business experience to put it together for you based on everything I've learned by helping get other people going. I would have helped at least two or 300 people get in their own food trailer business, okay? And different feedback from some different people, different menus, different things. You, you see things happen over time. This has all been condensed down 
into this training for you. Um, and how much uh, uh, money you want to make, um, provided you have a go, a bit of a typo there. Anyway, some tips, okay? Um, first, as I said earlier, I think in step three, uh, sorry, step two, you want to have raw ingredients that can be multi-used. They're not just used for one thing, they can be used for different things, okay? Um, because base ingredient, the less you have of them, equals less waste, okay? Um, you want to make sure you run proper accounts, okay? People get into the food trailer industry and they go, oh great, it's cash business. A lot of people pay wave these days anyway, which may, may or may not be aware of, right? But you want to run proper accounts. You're running a business, so run it properly. It's not just your own piggy bank, okay? Because what will happen is you'll spend money that you shouldn't be spending and essentially what will happen is um, you'll wish that, um, you'll essentially wish that that, um, that money was um, available when it comes time that you need it, okay? Um, yeah, don't treat your, your business um, um, just as a cash business. Run it like a proper business. It's not difficult to do, okay? Um, and you must buy right to sell right. So you must buy your ingredients and hire your staff at the right price and so on and so forth, right? It's no point hiring your brother or your sister or your mum if they're going to sit in the corner and you have to hire someone else to do their job anyway. Make sense? Okay. It's really important that you um, get the right people that can do the job at the right price because you're running a business. It's really important to understand that. Okay. Um, you also have to be aware of price creep. So one is sometimes when you're buying different things, okay, if you get used to a certain supplier, especially if they're a smaller operator, not so much the bigger ones, but you got to be careful of price creep. So your cost of your... Um, your ingredients will increase and that will decrease your margins you don't see it happening, okay? Um, and you want to minimize staff as well. Don't get the staff just for the hell of it, okay? You can always be run off your feet to start with and then go, okay, cool, now I have to get someone um, to uh, work with me and so on and so forth. Now, I do know that a lot of people have not much experience or zero experience in hiring staff. Uh, I do also know that, that for a lot of people, that's you know, one of the things that freaks them out the most. You don't necessarily have to do that, okay? But there comes a point in time if you want to expand, you have to um, um, hire staff. If you want a basic tip on hiring staff, generally people that are a little bit older, um, as in, in their 30s, 40s, 50s, they'll do a much better job than people that seem cheaper and they're younger. You can make your own decision. I don't know your business, right? But that's just a little tip uh, as we're going through. So here's a quick video, well, it goes for quite a few minutes, where I've literally got a spreadsheet. I'm gonna run through exactly how much money you can make in your food trailer, um, breaking it down by how many days per month you're working, how many hours you're working per day, how many people per hour buy something for an average value of $10, average value of $15. The numbers can get much higher. Honestly, I've gone through, mathematically worked it out, laid it out for you so it's nice and clear. You can adjust it any way you like, okay? Um, but you can understand exactly how much money you can make. Okay, so I want to take a minute and um, sort of go through and sort of show you what you can make in your food trailer um, per month, I guess you'd call it, okay? Now, most people never do this mathematics, nor do they understand how to do this mathematics. So I've sort of gone through and done it for you. So I'm gonna go through and explain it to you the best I can, right? First, you gotta understand you don't have to pay um, rent, you don't have to pay any ongoing costs. There's always a chance that, that might happen in some locations and so on and so forth. But for now, let's assume you don't, okay? And I'll work the numbers as we go through. Um, this is based on working five days per month, which is hardly any days at all, okay? Um, and then this is also, also um, um, based on working only five hours a day serving, okay? So for example, five hours a day serving could be uh, opening at midday and closing at um, um, 5 p.m., for example, or it could be opening at 6 a.m. and then closing at 11 a.m., for example, okay? So they're not very big hours. You can definitely open those hours up, right? This is your per head spend. Now, these are very, very low numbers. In all complete honesty, you can get the, the uh, per head spend up higher um, if you just go around and look anywhere, and you'll see $13 hamburgers left, right, and center. If you can sell a hamburger for... $13 and sure you sell other things um, that can push the spend up higher than this, right? But I've tried to err on the side of caution, okay? And this is people per day that come, so you're working there five hours, okay? Um, and the f 10 people per hour on average, and it brings the people per day to 10 at uh, $10. And um, um, to the to 
at Brace, you're serving 20 people an hour. So that's not a huge number. That's not a small number. That's a sort of reasonable average number. Like sometimes we'll be busier than others and so on and so forth, right? Um, you know, you could have a rush hour. It could be dinner time. You could have a rush three hours that you're serving 40 people an hour and then it drops back off to five people an hour. And then um, you have how many people per month come across based on the five days. And you'd say this is your total sales per head, right? So this is the dollar amount here, okay? Um, and then um, it brings down to your total income and so on and so forth. Now, you've got your ingredients, so you run your ingredients at 25% of your sale price, okay? Uh, any advertising you might do, any social media and stuff you might do. Um, fuel uh, or gas, combine these two together, is about $600 a month, which is pretty fair, fair whack for that amount. Um, repairs, uh, insurance, bank fees, all that sort of stuff. Staff, um, this is having someone working $22 an hour, based on these hours here, you may not use them at all, okay? And then any miscellaneous costs, right? You'll see when you come down, you balance this out over time, you'll end up around about, around about a $600 a week income, right? Which is not bad. Think about it, okay? Because you're working um, five days a month, okay? For five hours a day. That's not very much at all, okay? So that that's all pretty cool and so on and so forth. So, okay, cool. Um, what about if we actually work more, okay? Any month, if you're working five days a week, you'd have 20 days in a month, okay? So I'll pull these numbers through, run it at 20 days a month, okay? So you're working properly full time. Your staff has gone up, okay? Because um, it's based on these hours here. Remember, you're paying the staff $22 an hour based on five hours per day, okay? Um, you come through, you've served a 1,000 people, uh, sorry, 2,000 people over that month, okay? Because so you're working 20 days, 20 days, 10 people per day, five hours a day. It sounds like a lot of people, but it's not that really many not that many people um, when you break it down over that point of time because you were doing the same before. Your overall turnover based on these numbers here is now $25,000 a month, okay? Um, the ingredients have gone up, okay? Your gas and fuel have remained the same. There's really no reason why I can't put the gas to, they were high before, but I'm just gonna put them up again, okay? Um, to a further number, and you can play around with these numbers as much as you like but they're fairly industry standard things. This is the one thing people don't understand how to do, just do the mathematics, right? There's no doubt you're gonna be working pretty solid and so on and so forth, right? You'll do other things outside this, but when you pull all your costs down, you're welcome to add all your own costs and work this out however you like, uh, essentially, because you're keeping your overall expenses low and so on and so forth, um, you come through and you're making, on average over 12 months, about three and a half thousand dollars a week, right? Now remember, you're working 20 hours a day, you have staff members with you and so on and so forth. Now, obviously, um, you know, you could have more staff members and for simplicity, I'm just going to um, um, double the wage cost, okay? So this is two people working for you. Remembering they're only working, they're working on $22 an hour, so like ha um, hands or whatever, for, for um, essentially 25 hours a week each, right? So it brings it up to that. So you can see you can still make a reasonable income. Now, um, you can go and do other things and go, okay, cool. Um, what if I only got, say, six people and six people there, right? That brings it down. You're still making over $1,000 a week. And I'll pull that all the way through. So it balances out across all the months. You're working five hours a day, 20 hours, uh, 20 days, a, sorry, 20 days a month, five hours a day. You serve 12 um, people per hour on average. And your average dollar spend brings it all down through to here, okay? You're still making $1,100 a week, even on low numbers. Now, the numbers I showed you before, definitely much achievable. So we'll pick a, a point in the middle there somewhere, okay? And we'll go back and assume that you don't need two staff, right? And we assume that we're gonna pay someone um, $25 um, an hour, not 22, but 25, we're gonna pay them a bit extra, okay? And then you're still making two and a half grand a week. So you may, you can do really well, really well in your own food trailer. Remember, this is all based on delivery. Now you go to Uber Eats, right? For example, okay, and you try and order food for yourself that's even reasonable, or even two people for under thirty dollars, which brings you into your average per head spend. Okay, um, you can't do it. Okay, it's difficult to do. So you can easily achieve these numbers, but you have to put effort in. Remember, this is in in a um, at a time where you don't have as many opportunities as you could normally have. Anyway, I um, hope that helps you understand how much money you can make with your own food trailer.
but once you treat it seriously and follow this formula that I've laid out in front of in this training for you. Okay, so hopefully that was helpful for you. And um, really, I don't think ever anywhere I've seen anyone lay out how much money you can make. Now you can see it, you really want to do something about it and get in and make part of it, okay? So action steps, okay? So on your menu, narrow it down. What ingredients can you multi-use, okay? Um, what's the best sales system for you? Probably the most common one is Square. They make the money off taking percentage and obviously you can buy little Apple um, things so you can tap the phone and so on and so forth, right? Um, you know how much money you can make and so on and so forth. Um, it's really just a matter of getting out there and actually getting started and doing it, okay? So just a quick recap. We've gone over why you want to plan because if you don't have a plan, you don't really know where you're going. So it's vital to be planning, okay? Um, we've covered off on some different tips, okay, in regards to um, planning and making money and so on and so forth. We've gone through broken down costs and so on and so forth. And essentially, we've gone through the action steps so you know where you've got to go, right? So um, we're just going to stop here and go through a bit of a walkthrough with the King Kong food trailer. Now, the King Kong food trailer, okay, is also quite popular. Price point's a little bit higher, but people that are serious just grab hold of this and do it. Um, it gives you a lot of space to expand, okay? Gives you a lot of preparation room. It's a really, really good trailer. And um, majority of cars can tow it. It's got electric brakes and so on and so forth. Sorry, let me rephrase that. Majority of bigger cars can tow it, okay? Um, I'll get to how to work out to towing capacity of the car and so on and so forth a little bit later. Anyway, I'll run through this video now. Hey there, Matt here. I would like to introduce you to the biggest and the best. And what is the biggest and the best? Well, it depends on who you are, but King Kong. So you might have seen the Super Size, you might have seen the Maxi Elite, you might have seen the Maxi and the Large and so on and so forth, but you said, um, make it even bigger. So what's bigger than King Kong? Not much at all. So this is King Kong. Essentially, it's a six meter long trailer. It's literally, um, for want of a better way of saying it, plug and play. So when I say plug and play, it's literally got everything in it ready to go. Now you can add and remove parts and stuff like that. That's just a matter of having a little bit of conversation. So let me run through it for you, okay? So first, um, it's got electric brakes. So you do sort of need a little bit more of a heavier duty car and stuff like that, like a, um, a large car or lean into a four wheel drive. Um, the trailer by itself fitted out, weighs nearly 1800 kilos, okay? But over and above that as well, it can take up to three tons. So it's got electric brakes here. So you've got electric brake system, big heavy duty um, drawbar, handbrake system as well. So when you actually stopped, obviously the handbrake um, worked. It all comes rigged up, ready to plug in, seven pin plug, ready to plug in, so on and so forth. Now, this is our display model. I haven't fitted the gas to this yet, but normally the gas would come here. And you'll see in some other trailers, the gas and so on and so forth. Um, underneath, um, what I've done is actually added extra tanks underneath. So we'll sort of duck down underneath there. And you can see we've got a couple of fresh water tanks and a grey water tank now. They can be interchanged, okay? Um, so you can have the two for grey water and one for fresh or um, the other way around, whichever one you want. Now, all our trailers as well, this will sort of contradict some of the other stuff you've seen, but we're always upgrading stuff. What we do now is, is put multiple 15 amp circuits. So we find the best way to do things is get a single generator these days. Uh, we actually use an easy gen and plug uh, the easy gen generator in, it's 3.5 kVA, plugs in here, runs one circuit, you have a second one. That way you can wheel it off in the distance because we had too many people that had a generator mounted here and what the problem was that when they were going to a site, they get noise and stuff like that. Anyway, um, as normal, our pop-up doors, so you've got plenty of serving area. One of the biggest advantage of such a big trailer is you can shut one door, for example, and only have that, and you can have all your prep and so on and so forth happening there as well. So we'll come through, and I'll actually show you inside the actual trailer. So we'll walk around here. You'll see different things like, make sure everything complies. Now, we guarantee we actually comply, okay? So we've got vents and stuff here, so when it's enclosed, that if for some reason there's a gas leak or something, the gas doesn't stay inside the trailer, there's no need to be concerned because all, all, all emergency shutoff valves and all the gas work is done by a certified uh, gas fitter and all the electrical is done by a certified electrician, so it all comes with certificate so it complies and so on and so forth, right? So if I give you a quick run through and then we'll sort of come back. So uh, fridge freezer one, fridge freezer two, um, all the way down here, fridge freezer three, masses of storage underneath, so everywhere else is essentially a cabinet so you can store stuff. We put the sliding doors on, so essentially when you're going, you can just put a little dowel, piece of dowel, and everything will stay inside there. Now, if I go all the way down here, this is literally designed to literally be 
a King Kong cash machine, okay? So if you go through dual deep fryers, so these are actually gas deep fryers. So as I said, the gas isn't actually hooked up yet. So they're really, really um, simple to use, uh, fast recovery rate and so on and so forth. Inside here, there's when you, when you want to drain it, you can screw a little piece on here, just open it up and it'll drain straight into the thing when you're ready to move. So we've made it super, super user friendly. Um, chip warmer, so you can be literally doing your deep fried stuff, bring it out. On this side here, we've left this side blank. So if you want to be doing preparation work, or we want to have stuff and you can just picture having your frozen things bang straight out of the fridge, straight into here, okay? Then everyone always wants an oven, right? So we've actually got an oven here. So this is gas, okay? So gas oven with a gas cooktop to cook a whole bucket load of stuff, okay? Um, some of this stuff we've got sitting here so you can see it, but it's not fully bolted in as it would be um, when we use it. Then your bain marie, so if you want to store something, let's say you're doing, um, for example, using the gas griddle here and you're doing, um, for example, burgers, you want to hold the patties or onions or something like that, you can have that all sorted. Then, um, if you want more, obviously you'd probably do, we've also got the cold bain marie. So this cold bain marie, we can mount it wherever you like. In this place here, I've got it here because someone could essentially um, be prepping stuff and doing stuff here. So this actually takes um, six bowls. I haven't got the actual six bowls in there, but they're essentially the same as these and sort of sit straight in there like that. No different, okay? So it takes six of those. And then we go forward to here, um, a second oven. So this is actually a um, pizza oven. Now, technically it's still just an oven. It'll go up to 350 degrees, but it's electric. So it's designed, so it'll cook a pizza in about five minutes if you wanna do pizzas. You can step it up and do other things and so on and so forth. And you can either have that or you can ask me to take it out and so on and so forth. Then over and above that, we've got an actual Exo Expo bar. Um, coffee machine. Now the Expo Bar coffee machine, it's two head coffee machine. And um, we've got these, um, um, these, these are the ones we fit in all the trailers these days. Now the reason why I choose these is because they're designed to run on a slower amperage. Sometimes people modify coffee machines and stuff. You've got to have the right amperage so they can run reliably on a generator. So 100% no issues whatsoever with these, okay? Then you've got bucket loads of bench space. As I said, if you want to, you can essentially shut the actual door here and be prepping and cooking away while someone's serving down there. Remember this is a six um, um, person trailer. If you stop and think, there's plenty of room for one person to work here, plenty of room for another person to work here, okay? Plenty of room for two or three people to work here as well. Now, this coffee machine can obviously be moved down here. If you don't, if you don't want the cold bay marine and so on and so forth, we can move that. This really is the King Kong. We've got the range hood all the way along. So if you want to add a second griddle, like say for example, you're doing a, um, say for example, you had um, for a Lions Club or something like that, and you want to have a lot of people in the trailer and like big sausage scissors, you could line this whole side with griddles. We can mix and match and so on and so forth. But the way you see it now, all in, all done, ready to go is $59,900 um, plus your GST, right? So that's got the coffee machine, it's got this, uh, it's got the cold bay marine, it's got the three fridges, fridge freezers, so they can be adapted to either one. It's got the peach oven, it's got the gas grill, it's got all the certified gas work, it's got the actual, um, um, it's got the actual um, oven with the gas cooktop, the chip warmers, the double deep fryers, everything all done. The only ever uh, extra cost for this as it sits the only extra possible cost you could possibly have is uh, registration. Registration in New South Wales, you've got to pay stamp duty and so on and so forth, so it gets a little bit expensive. Uh, Queensland Regio, it's the same for each trailer. It's about 230 bucks. That's all the paperwork, us getting it all registered and reading your name. So if you're watching this and this isn't for you, um, that's fine. One of the smaller trailers are. You get a little bit of an idea of some of the accessories and stuff we can do for you. Um, and then, of course, um, what would be a trailer without your, your sinks and so on and so forth. So to make sure everything complies, you've got the hand washing sink here, and then we also got um, the um, prep sink here. Sometimes, um, depending on different menus, some councils ask for a fourth sink. It's rare, doesn't really happen that much, but we guarantee everything complies. And then under here, we've got the hot water system, jacks, pumps, and so on and so forth. The little tank, so make sure it fills up. Um, fire blanket, fire extinguisher, pretty much everything, right? So it's essentially good to go. It is the King Kong. It is the top of the range. If you are serious and you want to make some serious money, um, you'll have to have a large car, um, ideally ideally a four-wheel drive, to be completely honest with you, right? Um, to be able to handle the weight of this. It's got its own electric brakes. You have to have the, the thing. It's the only trailer that really needs electric brakes because the rest of them, if a trailer is under 1,990 kilos of the gross vehicle mass with everything loaded in it, 
um, then essentially it doesn't need electric brakes. So the mechanical disc brakes, and most people prefer the mechanical disc brakes, but this we had to step up next level, make sure it had electric brakes, but it's basically good to go. So if you're interested, you've come through, seen this, you might've watched, this might be at the end of the DVD. You've watched everything and you go, cool, Matt, I want the King Kong. All you have to do is um, essentially there's a little video, there's a little form underneath the video, or if you're watching this on a DVD or something, right? Um, so you've got two choices. Fill in the form underneath the video if you're watching this online. If not, drop us an email office at foodtrailerking.com.au or you can go ahead and uh, give us a call as well. The, the number's down there below. And um, you go ahead and call us, we'll have a chat, go through any other questions you have, make sure it's the right trailer for your needs and so on and so forth, and we go from there. Hope you really like it, hope you really enjoyed it, and uh, look forward to talking to you soon. All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video as well. So, um, and King Kong really is a good choice. Uh, if you feel like you know enough already and literally are good to go, uh, you go ahead and contact us, offers at foodtrailerking.com.au or uh, 1300 247 066. Uh, or you can go ahead and watch an extended tour of our trailers at foodtrailerking.com.au uh, forward slash step three. If you want to go for a detailed tour, I've showed you a couple of trailers as we're going through. Otherwise, we're heading on to step five. Okay, step five, choosing and funding the right trailer for you. Now, that trailer, you might be interested to know, is literally the uh, Godzilla. Okay, now, the Godzilla, because I created King Kong, and I thought, what's bigger than King Kong? Well, I don't know if it's really bigger than King Kong, but I call it the Godzilla anyway, right? Um, there is a full tour of this if you want to check it out at foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. You'll see it's got two big freezers here. It's got all your hand sinks there two glass door fridges so you can um, essentially, people can see all your drinks, Cold Bay Marie, double deep fryer. It's got a double gas system in it. In it. it really is a big trailer. It's eight meters long and it's literally a cast machine, right? So if you're interested in that, we can talk. Um, but for now, we're going through step five, choosing and funding the right trailer. So what we're gonna cover. So the five tips to choosing the right trailer Quite often I see people making mistakes and like the one thing I'm really, really, and you probably noticed it as part of going through this training, I'm really honest and really upfront and really straightforward with people so they at least know where they're going to start with. I'd sooner explain something that's a little bit uncomfortable or may not fit your actual, um, what you were thinking originally to give you the honest truth so you can actually go through and get up and get going properly um, rather than trying to tell you something that wasn't true and then later on you figuring out that and then coming back and say, hey, you never told me about this. Our whole goal is to give a premium product, premium customer service and premium advice um, as you're coming in and getting your actual food trailer. We'll talk about some funding options uh, in a moment too. We're approved with all the major finance companies and major banks, Commonwealth Bank, Westpac and so on and so forth. They actually come and check our premises and so on and so forth because unfortunately in the food trailer game, there's a lot of backyard operators or um, dodgy people from China and stuff like that trying to sell food trailers. And then you find out later that you have a big problem on your hands when it comes in time for warranty and stuff like that. So the banks basically wipe them. That only has to happen to them once or twice. And then the client obviously rings up and says, sorry, I can't pay my loan because the food trailer snapped in half because they bought it from some shonky person that doesn't exist anymore. And then um, the bank, just won't go near anyone except reputable people. There's very few reputable people with setups that we've got at Food Trailer King. Anyway, they're going to talk about quality and council uh, compliance, right? Because it's important. There's a lot of things that you don't understand in regards to food trailers that your naked eye can't necessarily see. So I'm going to show you what they are, right? They're going to talk about the right vehicle to tow different trailers and so on and so forth with. Um, I'm going to take you through um, just a little bit of a tour, more of the, the um, 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 more of a um, tour, a little bit of a tour of the factory, um, trailers, the trucks, the stuff that we've got on display, and just so you can sort of have a little bit of a look behind the scenes of the actual, um, our actual um, um, food trucking headquarters, right? And then, as always, some action steps. Right, so the five steps to choose the right trailer, right? First, this is probably the one of the biggest things you wanna consider. Consider your growth. A lot of times people, and I understand some of the times people will do it, they go, oh, I wanna save money, I wanna save money, right? 
that's the wrong way of thinking. This is a business, okay? You wanna go, how can I spend the correct amount of money to make the maximum profit? Not how can I save money? How can I spend the correct amount of money to make the maximum profit, okay? If you got a good concept, you know it works already, then you just gotta get out there and, and actually start getting going. Even if you've got a concept and you're unsure, it's just a matter of getting in there and having a crack, right? So you wanna actually consider your actual um, growth as in how many people or what things may you need in your actual trailer in the future, okay? Now, I will say on the other hand, if you're financially limited, like severely limited, and you can't like, for example, you want the King Kong, but you can only afford the Maxi, get the Maxi, get going, get started, and then later you can come back and do something about the King Kong, right? Um, like I said, you wanna consider how many staff you're actually gonna have, okay? Because once you consider how many staff that you're gonna have, then you know um, essentially how big a trailer you want to get. You want to have room to move, okay? I have people sometimes ring up, go, can I get a mid-sized food trailer? I want to have a gas deep fryer. I want to have a, um, I want to have a griddle. I want to have a coffee machine. I don't have three people working there. And there. So man, maybe you've looked at the video, but you haven't noticed the fact that that's just not big enough to do that. So let's refine that a little bit. And quite often they have to, they end up going for the XL or the Maxi so they get the right trailer for the for the job. Because I don't want the phone call from you in the future where I just sold you what you thought you needed, but I didn't give you honest advice. If I go through and give you the honest, clear advice, and then you still choose the opposite, that's completely on you and that's completely up to you, okay? And like, I don't want to create any issues, so I'd rather tell you honest stuff up front, right? Um, make sure you got real proper fittings. You're going to understand what you're getting, not like crappy stuff that breaks and so on and so forth. And towards the end of this, I'll literally go inside one of the trailers and show you all the different things. This would be really worthwhile, right? Um, you need to understand towing as well. Um, surprisingly, some people don't understand, like towing a trailer is really, really easy. It follows you, it's not difficult, okay? Backing it is not difficult either once you get a little, get the swing of it, okay? Um, um, but you just need to understand some basic principle of weights and so on and so forth and understand. Um, then I'm gonna talk a little bit about branding and the perception of the um, um, the public, okay? Because this is choosing and funding the right trailer and branding and sign running becomes part of that, okay? Um, and the public perception, bigger is better. People, if they, if you've got a bigger food trailer, they notice you and are more likely to come over. If you've got smaller because you're saying, oh, I'll save that extra 10 grand or that extra 15 grand and get the smaller thing, you want to dominate. You don't want to, you don't just want to play in the same thing. You want to dominate. So you're getting into business to make money. That's why you're there, okay? That's a real reason. You got the passion, but you still want to make money, okay? You might want to replace your income. You might not want to do your job. You might want to do it side hobby, but the bottom line is you're doing it to make money, okay? And when you say so bigger is better because that's when people see bigger, they're attracted to bigger, okay? So funding options. First, you can use your own money. Um, sometimes your own money also comes in, will sort of cross over into the thing of um, redraw, okay? So you might have redraw um, available um, within your actual um, within that, your actual home loan or something like that, or you've got savings, that's great, use your own money. Finance, that's a good option too. If you're gonna use finance, um, there's a few things that you need to, a few boxes that you need to tick. First, you must have a good credit rating, okay? Second, if you've got a good credit rating, um, you need to be working full-time for the same employer for three months or part-time for six months, okay? If you're self-employed already, let's say you're already running a food store, you'll need to have an ABN, okay? If you've got the ABN, generally under two years, um, you'll just have to have some proof of income, generally an accountant's letter. If it's over two years and registered for GST, it's quite easy. Um, if you own property as well, that's like own, own or paying off a mortgage, that's also a um, uh, good thing, right? You can rent stuff, okay? Um, we do have a limited rental fleet, okay? Normally, the minimum hire that most people will do is um, 90 or 180 days. It's generally based on the XL 2.0. Gives you a chance to, to um, have, a, have a go. That's a, it is a way of getting started, right? Um, or you can look around, and generally, if you start looking around, you'll probably find that there's some things around that you don't use anymore and that potentially you can actually sell. So you definitely want to consider that as well um, to offload or, or sell something and so on and so forth, right? Um, so quality and council compliance, okay? So um, gas work and electrical, your gas work must be done. It has to be done. We do it all. We we do it all. We purposely do it with an independent 
licensed gas fitter, okay? The stuff we do complies anywhere in Australia. Same with electrical, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna literally go through and take a little video tour in a tick. So sit with me and I'll just give you the basis overview. Um, any gas work, you need an actual firewall, okay? Most people, most trailers out there um, don't have it because it's expensive to do, it's time consuming to do, and if you don't have it, um, then we started putting them in quite a long time ago, okay? And then we started hearing stories of people ringing us up, thanking us, and say, thank you, thank you. I was operating, the council came through and inspected, did random inspections. Every other food trailer got shut down, okay? And I was still there working away because they knew I had a firewall. They could see the firewall existed. If I hadn't had that, had that, I'd be shut down too. And sometimes people have gone out of completely out of business because the cost to put the right firewall in is thousands later, thousands, okay? So we make sure it's there if you've got gas work, okay? You want to make correct stainless, you want to make sure it has 304 stainless steel. It's almost impossible to tell by looking at it. Basically, it's impossible to tell by looking at it. The only way to, to tell is by grinding it. 304 throws off a lot more. Um, 204 and lower quality throws off a lot less sparks and so on and so forth, right? Um, when you see cheap and nasty stuff for sale, they're using cheap and nasty components. A lot of you don't see, okay? They don't have the firewalls. They don't have the proper compliance. They don't have the proper stainless steel. 304 is proper commercial grade stainless steel that will last, okay? Um, you need to make sure you've got correct appliances. You can't have appliances that don't comply, um, for example, gas that doesn't comply um, with Australian gas regulations. It has to have certain numbers and has to comply, okay? The electrical stuff, if it's not right, it's going to short your van out. There's a lot of things that people don't, they don't see with their naked eye and they don't understand or they don't see, okay? This is why I'm telling you this stuff, okay? Um, correct power points and correct circuit breakers. You've got to have the correct power points and correct circuit breakers so it's all safely and properly done, okay? The plumbing has to be done properly so it won't leak and so it's reliable and the stuff will go to the water tanks. You have to have proper stainless steel water tanks with three or four grade stainless steel. Otherwise, you're going to be selling stuff with rust in it. The cheap and nasty ones, if they put the trailers underneath the, the tanks underneath the trailers, they make it out of 0.6 millimeter 204 grade stainless steel. People can't see that in their eye. We make it out of 1.5 millimeter 304. Um, and you need to understand the council, different types of council approvals, okay? Um, so just a very, very fast run through of the council approvals. First, we guarantee compliance with all our trailers. We absolutely and totally guarantee it, okay? Doesn't matter where you're in Australia, if you have an issue, then we'll deal with it until such time as your, uh, as your trailer is compliant. We also have all the paperwork and assist and basically do all the paperwork for you, okay, in regards to the council applause. We still need to know your details, what you're cooking and so on and so forth, right? Um, over and above that, so we guarantee the trailer complies. Over and above that, it becomes back to the location, which we talked about earlier. And over and above that, the only other thing you need in general is a food safety license, which essentially means that you can know how to handle food properly, which is a little online course, right? So I'm just going to go through um, right now, and we're just going to go through a little video. I'm literally going to jump inside a trailer and run you through and show you all the different things that we do inside a trailer um, to make sure it complies and to lift the quality so you understand that you are buying quality at the right price. Okay, as I said, I wanted to take you through and show you physically on an actual trailer compliance so you understand what you're talking about and the amount of effort that we go to to make sure uh, trailers comply. Um, you'll see even on our website, we've got a uh, certificate that we say we 100% guarantee um, the trailer will comply to council regulations. But over and above that, there's all these little things that people don't understand and it's not seen by the naked eye, okay? So this is a super size. We've done a few customized things on this actual trailer, right? You're gonna understand, um, like I'm standing at, at our factory and uh, um, you would have seen it, you'll see it at the end of the training and you would have seen it at the start of the training as well, right? Basically, the actual factory, um, we've fully set up to make sure everything's 100% right before it actually leaves, right? Now, occasionally things go wrong and so on and so forth. We cover it all around Australia, it's no issues, right? So back to compliance, okay? First, first and foremost, okay? The trailer must have the correct coupling for the weight range, okay? There's different types of couplings. This is a, this is a coupling with a handbrake that's suitable for electric brakes. This is a super size that's had some modifications to it, okay? Gas work, okay? Must have a plate like this and it must be signed off by an actual um, certified gas fitter, okay? So it's got the plate and so on and so forth. Everything's done 100% right, but independent, 
qualified gas fitter, okay? If it's not there, it doesn't comply, okay? The pipe work must have the right capacity and so on and so forth. You need to know what you're doing in regards to this. It's taken us years to figure it all out. The braking system, this one in particular, once a trailer goes over 1,990 kilos, it has electric brakes, right? So this one in particular has got a full breakaway switch and so on and so forth on it. The chassis has to be made about strong enough steel. Um, insurance companies these days, unless the stuff's um, fabricated and made by someone reputable like us, they won't insure them, okay? Meeting someone in a car park thinking that you're gonna buy a trailer for the cheap, first they vaporize and disappear, right? And or, or buying something thinking that you can get it cheap from China, quite regularly you have people come in with all things that have been shipped over from China, damaged, don't comply and so on and so forth, they get nowhere. Anyway, um, we'll, sort of, um, we'll shoot around this way, hope that the light's not too bad. And I'll show you inside here, okay? So we'll quickly whip up inside. Besides, once again, not standard. You might wanna jump in, I can show you a couple of things, right? While we're going past, it's probably worthwhile. We've added these in recently as a um, stand-up fridge option. Really, really good, right? Anyway, um, it's a little bit difficult to see in this one, but behind here, you can just see a lip here, okay? There's just a lip. Most people have no idea that this is this, but in behind here is a full firewall, right? So all this gas work and these gas appliances, to make it all comply, right, it's actually got a full firewall in there and we build that into the actual trailer. Without that, don't comply. Now, here's the thing. The council officers, they know, right? They know. The people inspecting it at the start, quite often they don't know, but the ones that go and do random inspections once the thing's done to make sure you're complying with stuff and so on and so forth, they know. They know whether you've got one or not. If you don't have one, guess what? You're getting shut down instantly. It costs thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to put in afterwards. Once it's done properly at the start, it's 100% fine. Or the electrical has to be the proper type of power points. There's double pole power points. Fire blanket, fire extinguisher, all has to comply to Australian standards. It's all the stuff that we do. The stainless has to be 304. You get a cheap trailer, they've got 204 or even lower grade stainless. You can't tell. The only way you can tell is by actually physically grinding it is how much sparks come off. This is 304 stainless steel. It's a high grade stainless steel that lasts for ages. Okay, it's really important to understand this. We just spin around here. Let's spin around here and the electrical, right? The electrical, just like the gas, has to be signed off by independent certified electrician. It can't be just randomly done, okay? If it's not signed off, it has to have all proper quality Australian standard circuit breakers and so on and so forth, right? These eclipsal um, um, circuit breakers and so on and so forth. You need to understand all this stuff to make sure that you've got a trailer properly. All your, all your appliances have to be tested and tagged. You won't comply. If it's all got to be done by a certified electrician. This is all the stuff we do. I might sound like I'm going on and so on and so forth, right? Even other things, and, and um, it's outside the trailer, I can probably tell you anyway. The tires must be the right rating for the trailer, okay? If you have the wrong rating, then the trailer technically shouldn't be on the road. You have to have the right rating tires with the right weight capacity and the right ply and so on and so forth, right? All these little things that people don't see, okay? The bushes must be strong enough. The amount of trailers that we see, people go, they ring up and go, hey Matt, can you fix my trailer? I bought it from overseas or I bought it from some guy. I can't find him again. Can you fix it for me, right? And the fixing the repair bill gets so expensive that people go and resell them again, okay? And then we see the trailer back again, sent back to us from someone else. And so we've already looked at that. And it's so expensive. They actually bought a new one to actually um, make sure they comply because we had to basically strip the whole trailer down and almost start again because everything was literally falling apart in it. But people don't understand this until it's too late. They see a little cheap price, but they don't understand what, again, our trailers are fairly priced, but good quality. Anyway, hopefully that helps you understand a little bit more about compliance. All right. So um, now I just want to talk about the actual right vehicle to tow with, okay? Um, quite often, people are uh, a little bit confused about this. They're not sure what is their vehicle big enough Do they need to buy another vehicle and so on and so forth, right? Obviously, it comes down to the trailer that you're investing in, okay? Everything under a Maxi, um, um, an XL or an XL 2.0 or a Maxi will generally come in at 1,990 kilos. The small ones, are the mid 750, the large is about 1,200. Um, and when I say 1,990 kilos, that's a GVM, right? So if you're not sure, and like bear in mind that when it's empty, a Maxi will come in about 1,400 kilos um, when it's got just the appliances but nothing else in there, right? So if you want to know, the basically the best way of doing it is literally get your, your 2009 um, Mitsubishi Bajero towing capacity, for example, just the year 
and the and the model of your car towing capacity google bank you got the answer instantly okay it's right there for you now um bear in mind okay that you're looking at the brake capacity because all our trailers have brakes okay every single one of them um the maxi and below have disc brakes mechanical and um the super size and above have electric brakes on four wheels okay um that's to comply with all the strain standards and so on and so forth right so that's a quick and easy way to work it out okay um if for some reason that your vehicle is too small some people go well i'm going to buy a brand new car if you or, or you know upgrade my car if you're going to do that and that works within the plan totally cool totally fine right um however if you're on a budget and go okay cool how can i make this work right first when you deal with your finance options you may be able to put it in this part of the deal um i find that earlier model um pajeros like early 2000s okay and earlier model rodeos like early 2000s you know like 2000 you know to 2000 to sort of to 2008 sort of that zone okay generally okay they're quite cheap you can buy them for somewhere between four and eight grand okay and then they become the dedicated vehicle for your food trailer okay and they can carry the weight and so on and so forth. you obviously got to match it back to the food trailer so it can be a low cost option for you okay um so signage okay so hopefully that helps you understand the right vehicle to tow with and towing if you're not used to towing don't be concerned it's not difficult you just got to get in there and do it and just like anything you get used to it okay um so signage okay you don't want to skip okay some people go and they'll invest in all the stuff and so on and so forth they'll invest in their trailer and i won't do any signage or i'll i've seen people literally write texture on the side of their trailer okay oh we don't want to spend money on signage we'll write it with text on the side of the trailer what does that say to someone potentially coming to buy it it doesn't um it doesn't scream trust like they're going to eat they don't want to get sick and they're seeing you written on the side of the trailer with a texter like in some circumstances it might look cool and trendy if you know what you're doing but just really dodgy looking stuff not really going to work i probably should have a photo to show you okay so you just don't want you don't want to skip the signage step even if you get started and you don't have the funds towards it then maybe you can add it later okay bigger better and brighter equals trust okay you gotta understand that bigger better and brighter equals trust okay so basically when people see and they can see you from a distance and they see it's really well sign written it's clean neat it's tidy that equals trust it's going to increase your sales so signage is never a cost it's actually an investment okay um so i'll just take you through a couple of quick examples right so here's one of our wood fire pizza trailers okay and you can see this is a basic simple design okay but um essentially it looks good people can see it from a distance and so on so it's more of a sophisticated design a more a um, um pizza company so those sides and these trailers all open up so when they're working they're not going to see it so much but um when they're driving around they're going to pick up business they got their website down here and so on and so forth right um here's another example so um quite often people are going to be matt can we change the color of our actual trailer okay the answer is yes you can change the color of the trailer it's done through sign writing so these guys wanted a blue trailer okay um like a light blue trailer and the wrap is very very um how would i describe very very um it can last a long time we use high quality vinyl and so on and so forth right we actually do it in-house i've got the latest rolling cutting gear the rolling printing gear um own graphic designers and my own um sign writing guys in-house the reason why we do that is because previously when we were sending it out it was just delaying the things and um when we referred someone across like a sign writer um when they're delaying it was delay the whole trailer we didn't want to upset customers so we brought it all in-house at great expense this is actually a king kong it's probably a good shot of a king kong because you can see underneath it's actually got four water tanks underneath it so it gives you that extra capacity and so on and so forth you can still see the full stainless steel along the back and so on and so forth. and it looks really really good it's just got that soft nice tidy look right and it doesn't say too much but their food will speak for themselves right um this is another one um pretty good example as well this is a maxi and um this is called holy she should probably put, should have put a um, picture in with the sides um pulled down as well this trailer is like has a sign running that's not complete but it's actually got um once again listened had a conversation listened to about the menu choices they took some photographs keep it simple someone can walk up and go bang i want that okay they can see exactly what it is so it's really really good in regards to that so it's a maxi food trailer holy shish okay 
Um, this one here stands out. They've got a bit of a, 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 a mix of stuff that they go. Lime Green Munching Machine. This is a really cool design. They've literally got the Pac-Man logo and use that and go along eating different foods and so on and so forth. So you imagine this driving down the road, people will see this and go, wow, check this out. Looks amazing and so on and so forth. Plus, it's going to attract attention. Let's say you set up, set up and there's six different food trailers there and um, three of them have no sign writing. One of them has crappy sign writing, okay? And um, the others... Um, um, the others look spectacular like this, you know, It's you're going to draw more people. It's as simple as that. You'll see in the front here, all the um, gas work that hasn't had, that we've put a plate on the front as well that's all complied and so on and so forth. We've put the weight of your trailer so you know what you can carry and so on and so forth. There's a whole heap of things that we do to these trailers to make them as good as possible. So that's another maxi, right? So this is an XL 2.0. It's got the dual axle on there, right? This is a more simple design, but it, people can tell from a distance, this is what the the, uh, the customer wanted. And essentially, it looks like essentially cladding. So the trailer looks a little bit different, but it will track people. Obviously, when the window's up, okay, um, then it, um, when the window's up, obviously, it will look um, a little bit different, but obviously, they'll see the food and so on and so forth. This, the pitch is obviously taken out, out the front of our uh, Food Trailer King headquarters. Interestingly enough, it's sitting on the back of a truck, right? Um, probably a good point to mention that uh, we deliver all around Australia. It's no issues whatsoever. Sometimes people ask for us, uh, ask us what happens if there's a warranty issue in regards to our trailer, if, it, if I'm in another state or something. Um, generally, it's not a problem. We just deal with it, okay? Um, we do everything we possibly can not to have warranty issues, but sometimes they happen. If it happens, we just deal with it and um, sort it out as quickly as um, possible, okay? So that's XL 2.0, okay? So I just want to take you quickly um, for a tour of our factory, the trailers and trucks, so you can sort of see what we've got on display and um, see our operation. It just gives you a little bit more context. Sometimes people ask me on the phone, do you, have, do you have this on display? Like we've got the largest display of food trailers and food trucks in all of Australia, okay? And people will come all the way to us just to come and check our stuff out right now. If you go to foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three, heaps and heaps of people look at that video. Me me and them or me and you have a conversation and we go through, work out exactly the food trailer that you want, the right one that suits your needs, work out the price, pay deposit, we get it underway, right? That's easy, okay? We'll put you in contact with the finance brokers, whatever, okay? Um, so a lot of people don't come, but some people like to touch and feel that's totally fine, right? And so I'm gonna take you on a quick tour um, the factory of the trucks and the trailers so you get a little bit of rundown maybe meet a few of the staff as we go hey there, matt here and um thank you so much for getting through this part so um i really want to just take you through a quick tour of essentially the factory the trailers and so on and so forth so you get a bit better understanding of the bigger picture on how we can actually help you um especially after you've gone through these five steps and you can see how much money you can make with your own food trailer so first we're in beautiful downtown south Moolumbar, right um, so not Moolabar, Merwoolumbar, right? We're literally about 20 minutes south of Tweed Heads. We're on the New South Wales, Queensland border. And um, you'll see next to us, we've got Moolumbar Truck Centre with their Mercedes and Mitsubishi um, truck dealer, okay? We're about to get run over by a truck, so he'll come past in a minute. Um, and then just next to us here, we've, uh, this is actually um, our factory where we fabricate everything and so on and so forth. Kindly enough, he didn't run, run over us. Thanks, mate. Um, and so, I'll go in and literally show you everything. I thought it was best to show you from this level, from out here, um, the sort of setup we've got going on here and so on. So, so I'll quickly run through the trailers that we've got on display. And then, um, and I think we've honestly got the biggest display in all of Australia. You can go to foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three to go a full tour. It goes for about three hours and 20 minutes of all the different trailers, okay? Um, so for example, this is our King Kong, okay? When you get here, you're welcome by Optimus Prime, by the way. Now, Optimus Prime, you can just see up there, transform your life with a food trailer, King food trailer, which is true, essentially, if you actually do something, right? Um, so we've got a King Kong here, okay? Um, our Maxi Elite. Maxi Elite's quite a popular one um, because it's literally just get up and go. If you want to step it up to the next level, you, you go to the sort of King Kong. Um, the Godzilla, 
for serious players. Um, some of these are actual trailers ready for delivery. This is a customer's trailer right here, right? Uh, so this is Godzilla. Once again, you can get through a full detailed video tour of these. So I'm just quickly showing you. Um, this is a maxi food truck. We built them on brand new Mitsubishi Fusos. Um, once again, um, Mercedes owns Mitsubishi, right? So um, it's backed up by the same company. Um, this is the most popular selling truck in all of Australia. Car license, automatic, super easy to, to drive maneuver. That's an XL there, right? An XL 2.0 actually. Um, that's our standard maxi, okay? Um, and this is, this is a standard XL. We've got our wood-fired pizza trailer in here as well. So this is getting quite popular. Quite a popular model. I don't think this is screwed in or not. Literally slide out the Bay Marie and so on and so forth. Um, this is our um, club special, AKA the barbecue trailer, um, which is quite nice as well. Once again, there's a full tour when you go through and clients come in and check all this stuff out and so on and so forth, which is all completely and totally cool. So I'll just take you up into the workshop, give you a little bit of a sort of inside sneak peek on um, how it all works and so on and so forth, all right? Um, we guarantee compliance, okay? Um, you probably heard me talk about that when I went through compliance. We literally guarantee compliance of your trailer. Doesn't matter where it is in Australia, we guarantee it, okay? Um, as we come up here, the, the, the guys in the factory don't even know that I'm actually um, do, doing, a, doing a video looking ducks out of the way. He doesn't want to be famous, right? Here's Rochelle. You might talk to Rochelle on the phone. Tony's not here today. This is our um, little office setup where some of the guys work and so on and so forth, right? And this is the factory. The guys going through assembling a fridge. We got a super size there. We've got a um, there's a um, another super size. Just different trailers being worked on and so on and so forth. We carry all the parts. We've got a full blown professional operation here. They come here, check everything out, make sure we're all legitimate, suss us right out before they actually even offer the finance. So we've been vetted by all the different finance companies. Um, over and above that as well, and I might just duck, duck back into the shade a little bit. Over and above, over and above that as well. Um, like people trying to get cheap ass tra trailers out of China and we get them come here regularly and they're damaged and they, uh, they're they not repairable because the people in China say, yes, 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 yes. They'll say they'll do everything for you, but they deliver you essentially um, um, garbage, nothing complies, missing all the parts and so on and so forth, right? And they get damaged in transit because they don't pack them. They're very transactional, they just do it once. So with us, you have the full blown uh, warranty, you got any issues, then we'll just take care of it. So hopefully that gives you a little bit of a, um, better understanding. So hopefully you go, okay, cool. I'm interested in a um, uh, food trailer. You'll come and see us at Food Trailer King. And um, if you wanna do something about it, now's the time, honestly, do you know what I mean? Um, you just gotta get in and get started and get going. So hopefully that helps and just give you a very brief, quick tour of our uh, manufacturing facility down here at um, South Moreland. And remember, doesn't matter where you are in Australia, we can deliver it to you. It's no, no problems, it's easy as. And even if there's any, we do everything we can to avoid warranty issues, but sometimes things go wrong. If that happens, there's no problems. We can always fix it no matter where you are in Australia. So hopefully that helps. All right, so we're at the end of step five. We're just gonna run through the action step. Uh, all right, so make a decision. Which trailer do you feel might be right for you, okay? Um, obviously, we've gone through, looked at a whole heap of them, and um, you can also visit foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three when there's a full-blown video there, okay? to check it out, okay? Um, consider which payment option suits you. If you've got money, just pay for it, right? Or you can go finance, maybe maybe you wanna do a combo, you wanna pay for some of it, and then do some of it on finance. Maybe you, you, you wanna sell something, right? And then use that, like, strangely enough, every now and again, someone comes up and goes, hey man, I've got this thing, do you want it? And I'll, um, and I'll do that as part payments towards the trailer. Sometimes I do that, believe it or not, right? Um, you got to consider make a, make a decision on what's right for you, okay? Um, pick up the phone, ask questions. Either give us a call, um, write us an email, office at foodtrailerking.com.au or there's a form in underneath the um, the video at foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three, okay? Um, take action and follow through. I've showed you how to find a location, okay? I've showed you how to make the right menu, okay? I've showed you... Um, how to work delivery and takeaway options, okay? I've also showed you on how you can actually um, essentially get going um, um, and how much money you can make. And the money can be made really, really good. Because remember, if a takeaway shop can survive, for example, right? 
and have all those massive overheads and you can do it for a fraction of the cost, you gotta treat it as a business, okay? And I've showed you how to choose the right trailer for you, okay? Um, the final word, okay? Um, here's, here's the truth, okay? You've gotta do something to um, get going. I'm just gonna come back on the camera, back at the factory for a minute and just run through my final thoughts on where you can go to get up and get going in your own um, food trailer business. Okay, thank you so much for taking the time to uh, literally go through this training from start to finish, okay? At the end of the day, the difference in between just watching a training going, yeah, that's a great idea, it sounds amazing, I really should do it, and actually doing it is literally taking action, okay? You've actually got to do something and follow it through. Remember, having a food trailer is a real solid, tangible business. You're buying an asset, something that makes money. Sometimes people come to me and go, oh, well, I wouldn't want to spend an extra five grand or 10 grand or, or whatever, right? But they'll, they'll get something that's too small from or something crazy like that, right? Invest the money, you get a return. Think about it, right? You'll spend money on a holiday, you'll spend money on a new car, you'll spend money all different things, right? This is actually a thing that can make you money. If, it, if you start part-time, right? That's fine. If you want to continue as part-time, that's fine, right? If you want to work full-time, that's fine too. There's opportunity in every suburb, in every state, in every part of Australia, if you actually take action and follow through, right? So now, okay, if you go, okay, cool, man, I can see, thank you for so much for putting it over this training and so on and so forth. It's really good, okay, cool. Which trailer do I want, okay? Then make a contact with us, give us a call on our one number, um, drop an email off us at foodtrailerking.com.au. There's a form which is at foodtrailerking.com.au forward slash step three. You can fill that if you like, out that if you like, okay? And then um, I can pick up the phone, talk to you, make sure whatever trailer that you're choosing is right for you, and then literally um, take action and we'll get it all ready for you, get it all going. We guarantee the compliance. Um, we give you um, the 12 months warranty, you've got no issues and so on and so forth. It's just a matter of getting in and getting started. So really looking forward to helping you with your food trailer. Don't miss this opportunity. Get up, get going, take action. Contact us now, we'll have a conversation. If you need finance, we can help you with that um, through finance brokers and so on and so forth. Really look forward to helping you. And once again, thank you for going all the way through and watching this training. I really appreciate it.